Morning everybody and welcome to our uh, uh, general meeting for the month of March and uh, this is our first or last sorry last uh, official general meeting for this term of council and uh, at the end of this meeting all councillors will have uh, a couple of minutes to uh, say whatever they wish to say um, because some of us may not be back and uh, so we just want to uh, have some uh, parting words, I'm sure. So uh, welcome to anybody in the uh, chambers and welcome to everyone that's watching online live stream. So uh, we'll move on now uh, to, do we have a pastor? No, doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, and again, for the last time, uh, Mayor Otto's an apology. So I'll move that, that uh, do we have, no, don't have to. Yep, good, done. Um, Councillor Duff or any other councillor, do they wish to lead us in uh, a prayer firstly for the morning? Anybody? Councillor um, Duff? Thank you. I'm happy to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. I just think um, it's, it is um, a privilege to be here and, and at this, as you said, the last council meeting for our term. And um, um, so I'd like to um, us to bow our heads and say the Lord's Prayer. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Duff, and uh, I will come straight back to you for the recognition of the traditional owners. Uh, thank you, Acting Mayor. I'd like to acknowledge country and pay our respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item five, declaration of interest. Um, any declaration of interest? Councillor Schumacher. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jones. I'd like to declare that I have a conflict of interest in relation to item 17.2, negotiated report for material change of use, residential care facility, uh, healthcare services, hospital, plus, uh, staff accommodation, cafe, florist and childcare centre for uh, Maple Street and Glendon Street development. The applicant is Ethos Healthcare and um, my declarable conflict of interest arises being a board member of the South Burnett Community Health Hospital Foundation and I therefore propose to leave and stay away from the place where the meeting is being held while the matter is discussed and voted on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other declarations, Mr. CEO? Just acting Mayor, um, I'm the company secretary to the board and we've entered into um, grant uh, a joint submission for grants, so I'll step out for 17.2 as well. Thank you. Any others, councillors? If not, we'll move on now. Deputations and petitions, we have none of. Seven, the confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. And uh, the officer's recommendation is that the minutes in the council meeting held on the 14th of February 2024 be received and the recommendations therein be adopted. Do I have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconded Councillor Erkins. Comments, questions, councillors? Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. Eight. Notices of motion. Good to see none. And nine. We go now to business outstanding. 9.1. And the uh, officer's recommendation is that the business outstanding table for the ordinary council meeting be received for information. Do I have a mover? Councillor Henshin. Seconder. Councillor Duff. Comments? Questions? Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 10, the portfolio for corporate governance, strategy, people, culture, communication, media, finance and sustainability, ICT, business systems, community representation and advocacy, 2032 Olympics and Paralympics, 10.1 monthly financial information. And the officer's recommendation is that the monthly financial report, including capital works and works for Queensland, as at the 28th of February 2024, be received and noted. I'll we'll have a mover. Councillor Duff, seconder. Councillor Henshin, comments or questions, councillors? Councillor Schumacher. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jones. I just wanted to, um, I guess, uh, look again just at our capital expenditure program, currently sitting at 13.03 in actual expenditure, which is about 31% of our total amended budget. Um, I just wondered if the managers may be able to give an update on their capital programs and how things are tracking in that regard. They're all looking at each other, but we'll give everyone an opportunity. General Manager Susan and Aaron and uh, Leanne. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, through the chair. I didn't want to jump in front of Susan, so without her permission. So uh, just an update on our program. Uh, we're currently tracking about 40% um, actuals um, or just under that um, through our books at the moment. We are seeing um, a large percentage complete through there. Uh, the guys are currently doing a forecast for the third quarter review, which I think opens in the next couple of weeks um, for the, the next council to review. We are actually tracking under budget on um, some parts of our program, but in other parts, um, I think there's one bridge that the guys are looking at reviewing at the moment. We are seeing an increase in costs. So those, um, those items will be worked through with the next council to look to find a solution for that. Um, what we do see at the moment is large projects under construction for us, which is the, the second half of our program. So the Wandai uh, Streetscape, Tingora Chelmsford, um, currently in progress as well. The one thing that probably that understates our expenditure slightly is obviously we're nursing through that $2 million of complementary work for flood damage to manage that risk through there as well. So that um, if you put those into context, the team is going very, very well at the moment compared to last year. Um, and we're hopeful that um, by the uh, end of financial year, we'll probably have our, our highest touch wood that nothing happens in between now and then with, with weather. Um, but we'll have probably one of our highest completion rates um, since I've been at council. So we're looking forward to that. Um, through you, Chair. Um, just to give an update, yes, we, we are working very hard in our capital works space, as you're aware. Um, this is the biggest program that we've had in the parks section um, forever, so very excited about that. Um, we have been scoping out some of the works and um, finalising a lot of the pricing. The difficulty that we are having is that there is some large increases um, in some of those proposed works, and some of those works are actually with existing funding sources. So it's about um, reporting back through the funding source, but also looking at our project scope to see how we could actually pull that back and have the funding body agree to those, those changes. So we're just working through that, and um, we would like to present that back in the third quarter to bring that to council's attention, that there is um, some projects, especially around like Memorial Park, where there's components to that project. It's just not a one-off item, there's um, several items in that. So, and also the, the last little bit with the um, Cumbia um, Park out there as well. And also the works up at Mergen with the um, half basketball court. So all of those three projects have a lot of concrete and that's where we're seeing um, major increases. So we'll work through that and we'll bring those projects back in the third quarter for an update. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, I have nothing to add. Um, uh, we don't, uh, finance doesn't have um, capital. We only have the joy of collating all the financial data for you. So um, that's, uh, and that's what's presented to council for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you for the update. I certainly uh, find it difficult. This will be perhaps my last council meeting to scrutinize every last bit of your financial report. Um, but it was really pleasing to see you know, that we have over this term brought down our property and rating debts um, that were overdue by 90 days in February to see the balance come to 433, which was a reduction of 219. It was really pleasing to see, $1,000. Um, also wonderful, and I know there's a lot of work that goes into that. Wonderful to see our rates in arrears sitting at um, 3.5 million or 5.64%, which is the lowest it has been in this term of council and much lower than our target of seven, which is fantastic. And I know the team works so hard on that. And to also um, leave out the term, noting that we have had a reduction in council borrowings of 12,587,000. That is an amazing outcome for our council. And uh, I think it really sets us up looking ahead, noting that um, our current balance at February, 2024, was $23 million, so well done to the team. Um, and great to see while we have drew cash out from time to time, which nobody likes, Councillor Schumacher likes to do, doesn't, doesn't like to do, it's wonderful to see that there has actually been an increase of $19.11 million, leaving Council's actual um, balance at $56.06 million. 
So despite the fact that we are in an operational deficit due to that large number of um, the large number of assets that we own, I think it really demonstrates how hard this council has worked to be financially frugal and to do the very best we can with every dollar of ratepayer money contributed. So it's been um, an honour scrutinising the budget and every general ledger with you all, and um, I think we've left the council in the best financial position we could have in spite of instances like COVID, for instance, that really threw a spanner in the work at the beginning of the term. So thank you, team. It's been great to work with the finance crew. And I do believe we are the envy of the state when it comes to the information we get. So thank you. Very well said, Councillor. And uh, in, in the four years, everyone likes to highlight all the lows, but there has been an enormous amount of good work done in this term of council. So uh, every one of us should feel very comfortable with our efforts. So well done. Any other comments around uh, the uh, item at hand, the monthly financial information? Susan? Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry, just three, uh, Ms. Jack. Thank you for those compliments, Council. Really appreciate that, and I'll pass it on to my team. Just to clarify the cash as well, even though we have increased our cash, restricted cash by 19 million, some of that is like prepayments for our waste, and so there, just to clarify that, that's all. Thank you. Acting Mayor, if I may, just uh, an update too on the uh, waste. Uh, so we've signed the orders for the two way bridges. So not showing in that. So there's another million in committed that went out over the last fortnight. So uh, those programs are all all proceeding. And I think Maidenwell Waste Station. Uh, some of the paperwork came through the other well, this last month again for the planning approvals and a range of things. So Maidenwell's progressing well as well. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillor Duff. Uh, you. Acting Chair, just wanted to know with the with the way bridge in Wandai, will the Mergen um, commercial waste then will steer everyone to Wandai rather than going through Mergen? Because there's been issues at Mergen, as you know, with the weight as opposed to the volume. Well, whether we whether you'd use the term steer or not, but certainly Wandai will be the closest way bridge. And if I was a commercial operator, we can we'll be doing a public campaign. It'd be better for them to get to Wandai to go through because, um, regrettably, we're charged at state level on volume. So the more we can put them through the way bridges, the better it is not only for the operator but for council. So yeah, so it'd be good to get them to Wandai. So uh, so um, when I'm talking to the businesses, I perhaps should. Should, should um, try and um, encourage them to go to Wanda because there's been a fair bit of pushback. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Well, it'd be certainly uh, to their financial. We're, we're obliged by law to do. Oh, I'll probably use the word law, but we're obliged under legislation to um, charge it as as the state does with the waste levy. So um, there's not a lot of room for us to, for for discretion. So, yeah, so the, it would be helpful to us as well as the relevant businesses. We'll certainly, once the way bridge is constructed and in operation, we'll be certainly doing a lot of um, public advertising for that. But it would be really good to get them to Wondo, yes. Thank, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Nelly started doing some... Anyway, let's get back to serious stuff. Leanne, just before we go, a uh, question on the footbridge in Memorial Park. Um, the closure, can yes. you give me an update I on that, I can certainly give you an update. Um, this has been a difficult project for us. Um, so we made application for some funding after the, the floods to have the bridge repaired. And we actually put a proposal together to upgrade the bridge as well at the same time. Um, to do the upgrades, we needed to do the flood modelling, um, which we were doing anyway to, for other reasons for the park and the, and the pool plans. Um, through the modelling process, we identified um, the speed of the water, the velocity and the height of the water and some of those characteristics that's currently in the current drain as it is, that the bridge will need major upgrades to actually meet those requirements. 
Um, unfortunately, the, the funding that we have won't cover the full cost of the bridge that we actually need to put in there. Um, so it's over a $400,000 spend that we would actually have to have. So we've gone back through and now starting to work on the designs to actually just repair as is and not to modify the bridge. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. So those designs are happening and we're talking to local contractors in actually doing some of those works. We were anticipating on working towards having it completed before Anzac Day. Unfortunately, um, we're just not having good luck in getting the contractors on board for that. Um, so it probably will go over that time frame. So that's the difficulty of, of trying to build things to standard um, and, and having that new information about the, the water flow and the height. Um, you've got to appreciate that that footbridge was, it's over 50 years old um, and what it was built for does not meet today's standards. Uh, yeah, okay. So is it, my question then would be that if we need, if you're obviously going to design the bridge to go back as it is and it would be a lot stronger and, and whatever else, but with the development of the park, is it not makes common sense to build what we need to build to get it above the floods and all that sort of stuff? And if we need, if there's, and this is the one for the next council, but if it was me, I would be putting that extra money in and building it and getting it. Yeah, just, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, I certainly agree. And, and we would like to do that ourselves as officers. It's the timeline for the funding. Um, so we have been advised that QRA is not willing to um, negotiate on the time frame, and the funding has to be spent by June. So we've just finalised the, the flood modelling there just before Christmas. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to meet that time frame. So the best we can do is use some of that grant money to just do a repairs. Um, that will get us through for, for several years, and then we'll bring back a project for future council consideration or future grant consideration. Um, and we would have to look at upgrading the bridge into the future. I think where we've gone with this is about making it safe and operational for current, in the current budget and under the current grant. Um, just knowing that a lot of other projects we have are really tight and we're, you know, money is tight in this, in this area and we rely heavily on grants and there's not a lot of money in our restricted reserves. Um, so just with the time frame is just using that current grant that we have before June and get as much done as possible to just get it operational. Okay, yeah, I appreciate that. Just feedback from the community. There's people climbing down, going through that across and people are concerned, little kids, all that sort of stuff. I don't know. I'll leave that with you. I'm sure you've got it under control and uh, whatnot. Councillor Potter. Yeah, actually, um, it's with respect to the same bridge, but through you, um, Mr Chair. Look, I'm just curious to know, you said it wasn't going to be done for Anzac Day. Um, I'm wondering, because last Anzac Day, people were actually climbing through there. And is there a way we can make it safe for people just to use just for the day, just for the Anzac Day during the service, and then we can close it off again after? I just feel people are going to do it anyway. Um, so is there a way we can help that happen. Thank you for the question. Um, we'll work as, as closely as we can with the contractors to come up with the best solution. Um, we certainly don't want to put anyone at risk. Um, and the park does have other pedestrian bridges on, on either street. There is um, pedestrian access on each of the streets to go over that drain. Um, so yeah, I appreciate um, it's difficult because the Anzac services, um, I was there last year, and in some cases, people actually stand on the other side of the drain because it's there's just so many people attending that service. So the bridge is, is an important link, um, but we do want to make sure that we keep people safe. Councillor Henshin. Thank you, through you, Mr Mayor. I would just like to refresh this chamber's memory from a comment I made in here some six or eight months ago in relation to, and I'm sure Councillor Erkins, I might have mentioned that it was a boy thing, 
the manager, me, and with all due respect, asked what the grade was on that water course through there, and I said I'd go and measure it myself. And now there's been flood work done that we have to do something to that bridge. I hope through you, Mr Mayor, that the Future Council takes into consideration that the development in that memorial park, if it was to come, come forward, that whatever was designed in that concept plan gets seriously looked at what goes in that water course through there. Because here we are now saying that that bridge is going to go underwater. And Councillor Potter, you might mention six or eight months ago that there was an allotment there that water actually encroached on. So my comment, Mr Mayor, through you acting there is just that, that we noted that this next council takes that into consideration that if there's any work done on that memorial park, that, that water course is seriously looked at. Because here we are now talking about what I suggested eight months ago and how much water goes down through there. And there wants to be a feature in there. So just note that. Thank you. Point taken, Councillor Henshin. Councillor Erkins. So, Mr Acton, I'm not sure whether you're psycho, I mean psychic. I just actually sent a, an email to um, general manager about the bridge because we had been approached or we're doing our beautiful job of pre-polling. Thanks. Okay, any other comments? We, if not, we'll move on there. We've got the uh, monthly financial information. The motion is uh, moved by Councillor Duff, seconded by Councillor Henshin, that the monthly financial report, including Capital Works and Works for Queensland, as at the 28th of February 2024, be received and noted. We go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 11, the Portfolio Infrastructure Planning Works, Construction and Maintenance Water and Wastewater Plant and Fleet. Excuse me, 11.1 minutes of the Traffic Advisory Committee meeting held on Tuesday the 28th of November 2023. And the officer's recommendation is that the South Bennett Regional Council receive and note the attached minutes and recommendations of the Traffic Advisory Committee meeting held on the 28th of November 2023. Do I have a mover? Councillor Henshin, seconded Councillor Erkins. Comments, questions? Councillor Schumacher. Just question just about the item relating to Kingaroy Barkers Creek Road and the Weeks Road intersection. Um, just chasing some feedback on that. I've received numerous phone calls from a resident in that area about um, that very intersection who's concerned about the crash, um, that there will be a crash. And I read here, well, there's been no QPS incidents and that there's only less than 10 houses in that area. We wouldn't actually do anything. I was just chasing some feedback on it. So I can give that to the resident. Uh, through the chair, apologies from James. He's uh, actually in Tournament today, otherwise he was going to come along for this one to take some questions. Um, happy to take that one on notice, and if I can get some information earlier, then I'll have to distribute to councillors. So I'll raise it with him when he gets back. Yeah, thank you. I'd appreciate that. That, that um, has been a grave concern from an elderly man in the area. Uh, yeah, Councillor Duff. I'll just answer you, Acting Chair. Just a question on the item one, SDRC. Merg it's on page 102. Mergen Gainer Road, TMR, referred to RMPC as this is a road maintenance issue. Do you know what that particular issue is? Uh, through the Chair, I wasn't at the TAC meeting, um, but I'll be able to take that on notice and be able to provide that information back to Council. Um, thank you. Acting Mayor, you don't know what it was? Or was it? Question was that? It was, it was, it's Mergen Gainer Road. It was TMR referred to RMPC as this is not a road maintenance issue. Is that that big dip? Yes. That complains about. Yes. So, is, so we, but that's an absolute TMR issue because it's a, it would be a road construction issue, not a maintenance issue to fix that that dip that everyone complains about. So, but I certainly would. Um, yeah. Take it on notice. Yeah, I'm happy to through the chair. I'm happy to chase it up and provide yeah. a response. It would be a TMR issue, so yeah. um, I'll just get that clarified for you, yeah. Councillor. When it's yeah, so just on that, where it says referred to RMPC, it's that's uh, main roads funding, and that's where we put that back to as a discussion. We put the pressure back on the main roads to do maintenance and upgrades on that. As far as I, on my recollection of that conversation. Yeah, because we don't want to use RMPC to do that. That's our that's our maintenance money. They need to put the money in to do a capital upgrade. Correct. Yeah, th uh, through the chair. Yeah, so the RMPC for for everyone's benefit is the TMR maintenance money, which everyone knows that. Um, so I would dare say by that comment there, there would be a direction to use RMPC money to correct that issue, as opposed to exactly what you said, Councillor. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to make some further inquiries on your behalf. 
Yeah, we need to we need to lobby hard for that because that would use a big whack of our RMPC. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. With Main Road's comments were RMPC, that is a road maintenance issue, which you're yeah, hundred percent right, it needs we need extra money. So the people in the community that uh, we continue to fight hard for money from outside our region to ease the burden on road pass. Councillor Henshin, I think you were next. Yep. Thank you for you. Just comments more again than anything, uh, and for people to be aware that there is actually a attack meeting next Tuesday where a lot of this will come forward. And two things there of interest that hopefully will come through, uh, will not come through, but one's the Mandubba Jurong Road with flashing lights for the schools. And just to reiterate what it says there, that there's only 100 installed every year and it's on a priority list as to which schools get that. We've been batting for the Jurong school out there to get lights leading into Jurong where that school is positioned. And the second one uh, on Couchman's Road, we'll hopefully have an update there from QPS in relation to the speed zones. It uses a bit of a racetrack to avoid the highway going through there. So next Tuesday there is a TAC meeting. So uh, there may be something come out of that. Thank you. Councillor Potter. Yeah, thank you. Um, these aren't on the list, but these are things I would really like to be taken to the next TAC meeting, please. And one is um, I would like to know what's happening with the Kingory Barkers Creek Road, um, whether they're going to widen that right through. I've had many reports and complaints about that road where it goes from double straight down to a single with with no easy way, but you just got to get off the road if someone else is coming. And the other one is, um, I know you've said it before, um, de um, your chair, um, with regards to Tangerinji Bridge at the school there, it's a one lane bridge. Um, is the state government ever going to, or going to do something about that? Because I had a person the other day that said they were nearly run off the road there. and. You always hear reports of that, and I know there's nothing reported with the police on these, so therefore it's not classed as a traffic incident, but I still believe that this is something that is going to cost a life one day, and I don't want it to be a, to be anybody's life at all. I'd rather us try and um, get this sorted with TMR now. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Potter. At the Wide Bay Regional Roads and Transport Group meeting the other day, uh, I asked that same question. I've continued to... Um, Advocate for that for the yeah, anyway. It's um, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars was allocated uh, for a business case that I believe has been completed, and now it's just a matter of where the money comes from to pay for it. And it's again, you just got to go down and keep building relationships and try and get that money. And that's the only way. And you're one hundred percent right. If you go out to the Tangerinji Creek Bridge every day, there's probably a new set of skid marks there every day. And the school bus, unfortunately, has had a near miss where the, the bus was on the edge of the bridge and almost went over. So, uh, serious issue. And Kingaroy Barker's talking about psychic. He must have been because I was going to pass that on a question to GM Meehan. Um, the works that have been done out there, <coughs> excuse me, council are getting blamed for it, but I believe that's a main roads uh, work crew out there doing that. Can you just give us an update on that, please? Yeah, certainly through the chair. So, just for the the benefit of everybody, the Kingaroy Barkers Creek Road is a TMR control road. The works that are being conducted there are being done by Road Tech at the moment, which is uh, which is the Queensland Government Group. We have raised concerns with the road um, and some of the issues that obviously doing the rounds at the moment. We've raised that with um, TMR's management this week. Uh, we expect that we'll get a response. Um, you know, um, when there's one or two staff return to work in their area. Once I receive that, I'll be able to provide an update to council and um, we'll raise those issues directly to try and get them resolved. Okay, any more questions there? If not, we'll, uh, we've got the motion there, moved by Councillor Henshin, second by Councillor Erkins, that the South Burnett Regional Council receive and note the attached minutes and recommendations of the Traffic Advisory Committee meeting held on the 28th of November 2023. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 12, Portfolio, Community Development, Arts and Heritage and Library Services, 12.1, Grant Application, Regional Arts Fund and FRRR. And the officer's recommendation is that one, the South Burnett Regional Council delegate to the Chief Executive Officer for grant applications to be submitted for funding to the Regional Arts Fund. And two, the South Burnett Regional Council delegate to the Chief Executive Officer for grant applications to be submitted for funding to the FRRR Prepare for Drought Initiative. Do I have a mover? Councillor Duff, seconded by Councillor Erkins. Uh, comments, questions around that? Councillor Duff. 
thank you, Acting Chair. Just need to probably get a press release out around this so people know to actually apply for the funding. There, there's two good opportunities there, so um, that's all. Comment. Thank you. Councillor Schumacher. Um, thank you. I just wanted to take the opportunity to um, acknowledge Councillor Potter and all the work she's done for um, improving the way arts and culture is done in the South Manet over this last uh, term. I uh, just wanted to also note the Grooving in the Gardens events have been amazing cultural events in, in Nanango and I uh, really acknowledge you, Councillor Erkins, for the work you've done there. Is that perhaps something that, you know, it's been extraordinary to see 60, 70 people, sometimes even more, turn out with their deck chair to sit and enjoy music? Um, in the in the Ringsfield House settings uh, at no cost at all and the community connection, the real well-being, I think that, that those events have generated really should be acknowledged, so thank you. I just wondered, is that the kind of thing that we may, as a council, be able to use, maybe not so much the RADF funding, but the other cultural funding, the strengthening our communities um, application, sorry, the drought initiative, people, FRRR Prepare for Drought Initiative. Is there an opportunity to use some of that funding for um, similar community concerts? Through you, um, Acting Mayor, I'll just ask the Acting Manager for Communities to make comment to that. Thank you. Sorry. That's Deb. okay. Through the Chair, thank you. Um, we are about to apply for that fund. We're just firming up what those activities and events might look like before we put our application in, but they are the type of things we can certainly look at to add to that. Just, just we've only got up to 20,000 though as well, so we've got to try and come up with a good program and events that that will suit that grant funding for, but certainly can. Fantastic, because I know that, was it $8,000? $6,000 $6, got eight events at Ringsfield House. So I think, you know, if, take some of that away. I think the feedback from the community at those events and Council Open can speak more to that has just been absolutely amazing. So yeah, I'd really advocate for some continued um, events like those. Yeah, thanks Councillor Schumacher. Councillor Potter. Yeah, um, thank you Acting Mayor. With regards to some of these grants, look I think it's great that we're applying for them and working with Deb um, through the Arts, Culture and Heritage Advisory Committee has been wonderful. I'm just curious, I heard about um, a grant the council was applying for the other day. I'm not too sure whether I should be asking this question here, but, um, and, but it was for something for the museums. And I'm a little bit concerned whether that's coming back to council or not. And I'm just wondering whether every single grant comes into council and do we know what every single grant is for because you know, when I heard about this particular one the other day, there are other things. If we're going to apply for grants um, through the um, museum space, there are other things we could be using the money for as opposed to a pin up hanging from the ceiling. Thank you. OK, I have a lot of vacant looks here. Uh, any of the staff members want to comment on that, if, if there's any information? Um, through you, Acting Mayor, I'll just ask Deb, she can make um, comment to this. Thank you, through the Chair. We did recently apply for some grants for museums, for Kingaroy and also for Nanango Energy Centre. And yes, that report came to council and was ratified to put in the application for those grants. So anything that my team especially, and I think Leanne's team, if we have grants that we want to apply for, we do certainly check with council and get that ratified before submitting them. Thank you. Councillor Potter, continue. Yeah. yeah, I suppose as a further to that, I mean, this this grant, you know, we see this grant coming to council, but we don't actually have the finer details. So we'll, we don't mind ratifying grants and grant applications. But I think what it boils down to is the brass tin tax, um, is what are we going to use that grant funding for? Um, as I said, more than happy to say, you know, to, to say yes to these grants. But when I hear from um, people about a grant that we've applied for and we're, but we're spending it on something in particular, which we actually didn't know at the time when we say yes. Um, and I'm just thinking that maybe we should know a little bit more about these grants before we say yes to them. 
what you're saying, Councillor Potter, is that you would like to have uh, the councillors have some input on how the money is spent if we're successful with grants in the community. Is that right? Is that where you're leading? Um, yes, please, Mr. Um, to you, Acting Chair. Oh, sorry. I, do, I think what Councillor Potter is saying, you're actually talking about the actual grant we put in, not so much. You're wanting to have some input into what, what we're applying for. No. No, no, I don't think so. No, no. So, look, great that we're applying for these grants, but, you know, as I said, I heard about something the other day that we're applying for, and it was something that we ratified through here. Um, you know, we've said yes to the grant, but we didn't actually know what that grant money was being spent on, if if we got the if we get the the funding for it. So, um, yeah, but we that, don't see that, that application. Yeah. We think, don't get that application here. We I don't. think what Councillor Potter is saying that, as a group of councillors, if we are successful in gaining a grant from somewhere for fifty thousand dollars or whatever, I think she would like to see the councillors have an input along with the staff and the conversation on how it's proposed to be spent in the community. I think that's what you're trying to say? Yes, thank you. Acting. Councillor Erkins. Um, yep, further to that, I think, and thank you um, for the compliments on the rooting in the gardens, and I think just drawing, reminding everybody that that funding, we all had funding and there have been some fabulous things put on by e each and every um, councillor for their division but you know, it was only just an off chance that we found out about that money because that was going to be spent, if I remember rightly, on a seafood night. And um, you know, in council, we just you know discussed maybe giving each individual councillor that funding to put something on for the people of their division. So I understand um, completely where Councillor Potter is coming from. I think one of the things with community is community really don't know where money is coming from. And a lot of the things that they see, they quite often see as being a waste of money and they actually see it as being a waste of their ratepayer money. And I think as, as community representatives, that grant money, if we had more input into what was actually, what happened to that grant money. So I agree completely and I understand completely and commend the staff on the grants that we are putting in for, but I would definitely like to see councillors have more input into the final decisions on, on some of the things that are being, that it's being spent on, because as I said, the community definitely um, see some of the things that we spend money on as being um, not what they really wanted. Thank you. Mm. Councillor Duff, just quickly. Um, yeah. So, so I, I just um, what I'm, I think we need to clarify is, if you apply for a grant and you want to have a peanut hanging from the ceiling, that's what you're going to once that grant is approved, that's what you've got to spend it on. So council can't really once the approval has been through, change, councillors can't then change it unless it's just an open-ended one. So I think that we also, if if you want to actually dictate what the money's to be spent on, we need to be part of the actual grant itself, like we did with, I, I know that um, Manager Leanne and I worked together with the ones with the, the exercise and, and Councillor Urquhart was involved, where we, we helped to work out what we actually wanted to apply for, and that was uh, different types of exercise programs. So I'm thinking that what Councillor Potter is asking for is to act, us to be part of working through with our with the manager as to what we're actually applying for, as opposed to once we get it. Is that, am I right? Or would you like to comment, Manager Leanne? Um, yes, through you, um, Acting Mayor. Um, councillors, we, we spoke about this um, several months ago when we were starting to look at some other grants, because I think we are trying to get quite innovative and creative in, in how we source additional funding um, outside of our normal um, streams, um, and I think we're, we're certainly doing that well across the entire organisation. But we actually passed a resolution um, to have councillors involved in the application process, where, and we've seen how we can make that work. Sometimes the difficulty we have is, is the time frame, um, I must admit. You know, there's some grants here that we may only have four or five days after the council meeting to make the submission. So it is difficult at times to, to have those meetings with 
council, thorough council input. Um, more than happy um, for our staff to actually liaise with the councillors and, and get your feedback, um, get your ideas via email even, and, and try to feed that in. Um, you're exactly right, the guidelines are set by a lot of different funding sources and what they're trying to achieve, their objectives and goals of that funding, um, we, need to, uh, we need to stick to that. Um, and it's very difficult to go back and seek variation on a project um, straight after we've made submissions. So yes, certainly support the concept of having councillors involved in developing the funding application. Um, but we just need to be mindful of, of the short time frames that we have to work under. Just before we go to Councillor Erkins, Leanne, is it like when we talk about the grant applications, all that sort of stuff, and Deb just said that it comes in here and we've got to endorse it and whatever else. So does that happen with every grant or does is there grant applications go through or do they have to come through into this chamber for every councillor to endorse by majority? before we apply for it. Yep, Mark. Probably Acting Mayor, it's, it's across. We try to get a resolution on every grant um, because it actually strengthens the application. Now, could I honestly say that we get all of them? No, there's probably some of the smaller ones that we miss. But anything of a, particularly of a capital nature, the funding programs require, and as a matter of practice, we try and bring everything to council. Yeah, yeah no, that's what I thought. Councillor Erkins, just quickly to wrap up, I think that um, what Councillor Potter is saying is that there, there are some grant applications that you put in and you don't have to put in specifically that we're going to put a peanut from the ceiling. You know, some of them are to do stuff in the information centres. And I think probably that's what Councillor Potter is saying. It's the same as I said, the money that we all had for, our, for the events in our community, the money was here and then we decided on how that money was going to be spent. So, and as I said, coming back to, it comes down to what, how our community see the decisions that are being made for how money, money is being spent, that I just think that um, councillors do need to have some input because some things are not seen as an improvement, but as a, as a waste of money, and just to make sure, and, and bearing in mind that what Councillor Potter sees as something that's going to be fabulous, I could see as a waste of money. But if it's debated and discussed, then hopefully we have a decision that comes out that is transparent. We can see why the money is spent and how it's spent. Thank you. Councillor Henshin. Just quickly through you, Acting Mayor. Thank you to Manager Leanne. And so the Chamber's aware we worked hard and diligently on a grant that we put in for uh, feral pig control that's still in the process. I'm not sure where we are. That had to be done in a matter of a couple of weeks from when we first got notified of it. Fully supportive of that. I know I sat down with staff and we worked out what could happen. We had to go partner with three other councils to be successful for that grant. People have had a shot at me, shot at me in, the, in the public about feral pigs now, you know, they're probably not an issue or, or not as important as something else. Let me tell you, they are across our region. That particular grant is just as important as hanging peanuts from the ceiling. Thank you. You're on fire, Councillor Henshin. You're on great guns. Right over. That was a very good debate, um, good conversation. I think uh, the point was made and uh, the new council will certainly work uh, well with the staff. OK, we've got the motion. Oh, Councillor Shoemaker, quickly. Just to wrap up, um, Councillor Jones, I agree, and uh, over this term of council, you know, when we first started, we barely applied for grants at all. You know, the Building Better Regions Fund that we got for um, the Kingaroo Transformation Project was a large grant, and it, I think it did inspire some confidence for us to go after and chase more grants. And I just want to acknowledge the team, because there's a hell of a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to actually put those grant applications together in a hurry. And I think it is amazing when you look at things like our road assets, the fact that we may not be fully depreciating them with our own cash, but if anything, we're actually over, over renewing the asset, ratio, the asset ratio renewal for that asset class is above 100% because we are so hungry for grants and we go after them. So I really do want to acknowledge the team. I think it has been an amazing thing to see in this term of council to see how hungry we've gotten for grants and to constantly see every agenda 
there's a new grant application coming through which really does stretch our ratepayer dollars further. So thank you to the team for the opportunity to be part of that. Very good. Okay, so we now move to the motion that is moved by Councillor Duff, second by Councillor Erkins at one. The South Burnett Regional Council delegate to the Chief Executive Officer for grant applications to be submitted for funding of the Regional Arts Fund. And two, that the South Burnett Regional Council delegate to the Chief Executive Officer for grant applications to be submitted for funding to the FRRR Prepare for Drought Initiative. We go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 12.2, council appointees for 2024 Anzac Day ceremonies and uh, the officer's recommendation is that the council representatives will be advised after the local government elections on the 16th of March 2024 of their attendance at the respective Anzac Day ceremonies as required on behalf of council and you see the graph or the table all there below and uh, two, that council, <coughs> excuse me, Council approve a budget increase to each region to be $1,500 each for Kingaroy, Mergen, Nanango, and $600 each for Blackbutt and Wandai. Do I have a mover? Councillor Potter seconded. Councillor Erkins. Comments, questions, councillors? I think it's pretty straightforward there, the officer's recommendation. Mr. CEO, you got any yeah, add? Uh, just acting, Mayor. So we've brought this one now because with the uh, the election, there's four years, it all. It all they'll have to be worked out with afterwards. I just would draw Council's attention. We have had um, a community group has raised the issue and we're still trying to work through it and the offer will be made to have another specific, the police permits. That is causing us a degree of, um, of difficulty and we very much value the partnership with the community, but we have, um, the, the feedback's been that staff should sign the police permit that's fine if, if we know definitely that the staff is going to be there and um, generally with all the RSLs and the sub-branches uh, they do the peace permit. We do the TMPs and, and I would draw, it's often uh, spoken about the, the cash in kind. The TMPs, so last year was $53,000 of in kind support so there is no hesitation or, or moving away. Council strongly supports Anzac Day and dare I say, will continue to do so, um, as well as the, the, the financial assistance to the groups. But we do rely very heavily on that community partnership and with the police permits. Again, a lot of these things, we're not in control of the law. It is the law. Uh, and we do need someone on site who signs the, per, uh, the permit who will be there. So I just draw it, it may come up, given the timing, uh, we're still working our way through the issue. Uh, but uh, it may come up also in other, in other communities, it may not, but I just wanted to draw Council's attention to it. It is, as the TMPs have become much more, um, uh, do, do I say, complicated and certainly involved, uh, and the police permits have become much more involved. We've got Council, Police, RSLs, everyone working together to resolve the issue, but there are some things where we do need assistance. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, CEO. So there's nothing really needs to be done today on that? No, I don't think so, but we will We will probably, well, not we'll probably, we will need to, um, we offered last year, we had the issue raised its head last year, uh, we offered a meeting with RSL representatives, police, and, the, and, and it's not necessary to, to say which community group. Um, but, yeah, we will try that again, but we'll just have to work through the issue, and it is not going to go away, though, I suspect. Thank you. Councillor Duff. Uh, just on the um, 1500 to Kingaroy, Bergen and Nango, 600 for Black Button and Wandai. Just wanted to check with uh, Councillor Henshin. Do you think that, that like, there's not going to be any pushback from Wandai or Black Butt for the lesser amount? Is the 600? Is that, is that well, all they're asking just, for? Well, so I, know, just, I know that Mergen definitely wants to know more and obviously Nanango and Kingaroy, but just checking with the other two, that, was there a reason for that or smaller events or... Just yeah, well, I with Black Butt, um, I've had I've never had any complaints about whatever they've received. They've always been good. We've always had staff down there working very well. So, um, if it's increased to six hundred, and yeah, if it if it was to become an issue in Black Butt, I'm sure that uh, the CEO and staff and council would try and rectify it if there was an issue. Yeah, yep. Council Hanson, you got any response? Yeah, through you, Acting Mayor. Yeah, look, I. It is a little surprising, as Councillor Duff, like Wondorf is a classic example. We have an intersection there when we have a roundabout there that 
gets complicated with that permit. Not complicated, but it's a major traffic issue in Wondoy because you have traffic traversing around the roundabout up Scott Street and then Mackenzie Street. So there's a bit to happen in Wondoy. And I know last year we had some issues there as well as in Cumbia previously, even though Cumbia is what thinks, people think it's straightforward. It's a highway, major highway through the middle of it. So yeah, that's, it's difficult to work around and can get people offside sometimes. Cumbia is awkward being the highway. Wondoy, I think, with the amount of traffic that's there, be it early, but it runs through for a period of time. If you look at the time frames there, there's a, a bit goes on in Wondoy, um, from the dawn service to the cemetery back to the, the RSL. So mm, I th perhaps that could be looked at for, if need be, to further fund it, if that need be. Thanks, thanks, Councillor. So the table on oh, sorry, the table on page one thirty nine uh, identifies the expenditure over the last three years. So the smaller communities. So this is a model that counts, and it's not to say it can't be looked at going forward. But uh, in two thousand twenty one, it was a four hundred dollar cash component plus the in kind. Last two years, it went up to five hundred. This year, it's recommended to go up to six hundred. Uh, Wondi had, I think. Four, four, four and a half, or not quite four and a half thousand dollars of in kind for that exact same issue. The in kind moves as to what needs to be done. We've got significant highways, uh, well, highways through the, through all the regions, and yeah, certainly we'll continue to work with all the groups. Um, the uh, the cash component, I'm just looking at the manager generally goes towards assisting with the catering uh, and a range of things. So. Uh, larger events, more people, more catering, smaller events, but certainly the the in kind will continue to move uh, as as is what is required to make those uh, events happen. So that question then, in regards to catering, let's just or pick Blackbutt for instance. So that donation of five hundred, which goes to six hundred, would that go to the RSL club for the breakfast and all that that they put on? Is that is that where they go? Yep. Yeah, Deb, yep. Through the chair, yes. So those donations are mainly for the RSL clubs to be able to put on um, their catering for whatever events they have throughout the day. And the reason this came about is because King Arroy at a recent meeting asked for um, more money. So we just thought it was fair that if we're going to ask for more for one that we, across the board, ask for an increase for everybody. So, Deb, just if that's the case, we're rural in Highsville, Cumbia. Do they have a breakfast at all out there or do they do anything? Would there be any groups that would be interested in doing that? Like, how come they don't have never asked for support like that? I, to tell you the truth, I honestly don't know from a historical point of view what's done out there and why there's been no cash or for those, so mm. I'm sorry, I can't comment on that at the moment. So, who looks after Highsville? Is that Cathy? So, so through, uh, through you, Acting Chair, yes, Highsville puts on a breakfast. Yeah, they, yeah, through you, Acting Mayor, they all do. Um, come here and we're all in classic examples. I mean, it's usually CWA or, or Hall Committees or someone uh, do do it. And I um, certainly wonder, I would suggest, uh, <laughs> I'd be biased here and again, probably shot down, but. Um, Wondai would have every bit as big a Anzac Day in our region as anywhere else. It is seriously, seriously well supported in Wondai. And numbers there, and I know we talk collectively after how was your Anzac Day, what, blah, 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 how many was there. Wondai would be up there with the, with the rest of the region. Honestly, it would be. Great to see Cumbia. They march down the street and then, of course, go to the hall. Um, Hivesville, I believe, Councillor Duff does the same thing. Uh, and it's a and it's a special day. So, um, so Mr. CEO, are we able to make any changes to that in this meeting? Like, if we were to, and I'd certainly ask the chamber their opinions on Marul and Highsville Cumbia for a start and increasing Blackbutt and Wondai a little bit more. Um, is that something that we could put in here today and put a resolution for that that was carried for? Are we able to do that? You can. Do, yes, so you can, and probably today would be good because the um, potentially with how uh, the dates fall from the election, we may not be able to have our next ordinary meeting until the 24th, so it really need to be today. 
the timing was. With that acting mayor, may I suggest that I move a motion that those will rule on Heisel and Cumbia that it received no uh, donation as such there. Um, and I'm happy to go to my colleagues here in the chamber. Yeah, it'll be a discussion that, open to everybody here. Yeah, that, um, that we we raised that Wandai to a thousand and, and certainly at least, and I'll throw it to my colleagues, the, the rest there to $500 I'm, and I'm happy to have conversation with the rest of the council here. So that motion would be that we rule and goes to a thousand dollars, sorry, Wandai goes to a thousand dollars, we rule and Heisel and Cumbia, which has nothing in the donation column at the moment, uh, or sorry, previously in 2023, but they go to $500. Councillor Hanson, can I make a suggestion to you that you put black butt up to up a bit? And black I'd... butt is the same. I would imagine, uh, acting mayor in your your region, that that go to a thousand dollars as well. Okay, um, I'll get everybody's opinion on that, Councillor Duff. Oh, sorry, the, um, um, manager, um, general manager Jarvis has just mentioned Proston too, because. I never get to Proston, and General Manager Jarvis does Proston, but they certainly have a big crowd as well. So yeah. we'd have to add Proston to the I, I absolutely agree. Anybody that does a, uh, a service for the RS other Anzac Day should have some sort of funding towards their breakfast. I, it's one of the most important days on our calendar, as far as I'm concerned, and it should be recognised right across the region, whoever does it. So that's just my thoughts, but I'm happy for... so. Can we add Prost in there? Is there any other services that aren't listed there that possibly should be? I know we've got a couple of gentlemen up the back that would probably know everything about it, but um, yeah, so we put Proston in at 500. Happy with that one, Is there? You see, and you see $500. The name goes there, it goes to 1500 So Kingaroy and the name go Mergen all go up. Wondai from 600 to 1000 with Blackbutt. You missed a zero T. Is there any others, Councillor Erkins? Um, for those um, other uh, we're ruling and the smaller groups, the smaller um, towns that have it, I'd just like to actually draw attention to the fact that um, Kingaroy, Nanango, Wandai and Mergen all have RSL clubs which actually bring them in an income, whereas those smaller towns that are running it, you know, they don't actually have an income producing club. So, you know, definitely support that those club, that those towns who put something on for their, for their town are, you know, definitely um, supported because they don't have the luxury of having a, um, a club that brings in money to support them. Councillor Potter. Yeah, look, um, I think this is a great idea, but I suppose um, through you to Councillor Erkins. So with the, the Kingaroy Club actually um, supports the breakfast. So people only pay a partial amount for the breakfast. Um, that's, but the sub branch actually puts on the luncheon for all the veterans and, and their families for that particular day. So, um, which, is, which is always wonderful. Thank you, gentlemen. So I think this is a great idea. If we can um, make this more, um, more community orientated to spread it out to the whole community. I think it's the better. And thank you very much for bringing up Proston because to see it wasn't even on the list and yet it's still a place that we always go. So thank you. So just before we go to the vote, I'd, I'd certainly, this is our one and only opportunity in this term of council to make sure we get it right. It's our last chance. So make sure that there's no other services that we've left out. We could, no, it, well, Yes, they do, but the CWA look after that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do have a service and the school kids go there and 
They usually have 100 plus. That, but you know, when we we've got to we've got to be sensible about it because if you start the Bunya Mountains have one, they don't have a breakfast, but they have the right. So I I think we're pretty close to that where we are with that proposal, but Councillor Potter? Yeah, so with regards to that, so we've got a list right in front of us of everywhere that we go, um, so which includes the Bunny Mountains and Maidenwell. So I don't know what happens at the Bunny Mountains. I don't know what happens at Maidenwell. So is that something we should put in at least, say, 200 each to help them with their morning tea? Just a, just a question. Well, Maidenwell, I'm um, sorry, Bunny Mountains don't have a breakfast. They just go down to the coffee shop and have a coffee just on their own accord. So Maiden Bunyan Mountains is fine, um, but Maidenwell does have a service that the CWA ladies have to, somebody covers the cost for that. So well, um, well, I'm happy that there any more motions for you have been there that Maidenwell did adds to that list as well, because no one has Maidenwell has how many people acting there? Well, I'm sorry, but they, they, they're no different to a rule and all to any other, so more opinion for them at all for them as well. Um, these, are, these are end acts and we're slowly running out of them. So, um, yeah, the, I think that is all guys that this council in this region can do for our, our end acts. Yep, so is there any other comments to Councillor Henshaw? He's moving that... Um uh, motion. Is there anything that anybody? Yep. So we're all good. So as as we currently sit, Councillor Henshin is moving that. Sorry. So that. Uh, oh, so we. Yeah. So it's already yeah, moved. So, so if you, if brothers, if I'm hearing right, if the consent of the meeting to add those bits in. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, yep. it would be an amendment, but yes, yeah, yeah, so there's no the objection yeah. with the leave of the mover and the seconder. Yep. Yeah, so Councillor Potter and Councillor Erkins, are you happy with the additional changes to that motion? Okay. Yes, I am, thank you. Okay, right. So that now reads that Council number two will go to T. So that the Council approve a budget increase to each region to be $1,500 each for Kingaroy, Merg, and the Nango. A thousand dollars each for Blackbutt and Wandai, and five hundred dollars each for Arul and Cumbia, Hyzel, Proston, and Maidenwell. That's the new amended motion that we're talking about, Councillor Shoemaker. Um, yes, uh, fully supportive of the uh, motion, and certainly agree. Um, they're all very important services in our community, and we do need to find the funds to make sure they continue. I just wanted to check. Can we take some of this funding from? Where would we take this funding from? Because at the moment it's not in the budget. So, would this come from our community grants budget? Are we allocating funding from that, or like I just don't want to leave the staff with the headache of the fact that I know there's no dollars in the budget. Is a third quarter review? Is there money in your operation? I know there's no money in your operation. So, yeah, is it? Would it be diverted from community grants, possibly? That's my question. Yep, through you, Acting Mayor. Um, yes, we would have to consider it at the third quarter review on how we make those provisions. Yes, we will need to look at community grants or other savings that we have across that department to right. fund this. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I'm supportive of the motion. Thank you. Thank you. $3,300 in total, Acting no. GM. No. And I think that'll be one of the easiest amounts of money you've had to find somewhere else and adjust your budget. So for a very, very good cause. So that, if nothing else, is that our, that's our legacy councillors. We've uh, looked after the veterans that have looked after us to lead the life we have today. So we'll go to the vote on this one. We've got that, uh, go to the top T, can you please? So the motion is moved by Councillor Potter, second by Councillor Erkins, that the council representatives will be advised after the local government elections on the 16th of March 24 of their attendance at the respective Anzac Day ceremonies as required on behalf of council listed below. And number two, 
that the council approve a budget increase to each region to be $1,500 each for Kingaroy, Mergen, Nanango, $1,000 each for Blackbutt and Wandai, and $500 each for Aruulan, Cumbia, Highsville, Proston and Maidenwell. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Good discussion, good outcome. 13, the Portfolio for Natural Resource Management, Rural Services, Agriculture, Innovation, Compliance and Environmental Health. We have nothing. 14, Portfolio Disaster Management, Waste and Recycling Management, nothing. 15, Portfolio Rural Resilience and Disaster Recovery, Parks and Gardens, Property and Facility Management, First Nations Affairs, 15.1, Application for Funding under the Community Heritage of the Community Sustainability Action Grants Program, Round 8. And the officer's recommendation is that the South Bennett Regional Council apply for a grant under the Round 8 Community Heritage of the Community Sustainability Action Grants Program Capital Expenditure Project Category for Repairs to Bindooma Homestead Roof. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin, seconded Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, comments, questions, I think it's straightforward, it needs to be done. We get outside money, that's what we're after. Councillor Shoemaker. Yes, certainly agree and um, thank you for looking at that because I understand we only had 50,000 in the budget and um, that was probably very ambitious when we came to looking at re-roofing, um, particularly being that it's 170 years old and does have heritage restrictions on it. So I just wanted to confirm that what we're proposing to do is restrict that $50,000, apply for the grant, and then if we get the grant, there will be another <coughs> $75,000 that we'll have to find in the 23, uh, 24, 25 budget to complete the work. So the project itself will just be um, put in um, hold until the following year when we get the approval for, for the grant, hopefully. Yes, um, through you, Acting Mayor, that's how we think it will work. I think that's the only way we could do it, is put the 50,000 that we have this year in restricted, or have it restricted, um, to and, and use that $50,000 as a contribution. So tell the funding source that that's what we're going to do and hold it for that purpose. But yes, we will need to make provisions in the 24-25 financial year for the additional $75,000. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, $50,000 is really only going to do small, minor restoration works, but just working through the conservation management plan that we have now, and working with the committee, it's really um, the roof is priority one. Um, if we can have that um, replaced, then that's going to protect all the other sort of infrastructure underneath, so the walls, the floor, the ceilings. Um, that is a priority for us, is to, is to have the roof um, replaced. So yes, we will yeah. need to look at how we fund the additional 75,000 in the 24, 25 year, if we're successful. And I just had a supplementary question. I just wanted to ensure that we could actually put this work off essentially up to 12 months while we figure out the additional funding. Is there any immediate repairs that need to be made to the building? Or you know, It's been there for 175 years. I just want to make sure it's not you know, going to create more issues if we leave it. Yeah, um, through uh, um, the acting mayor, um, certainly um, we have been working on minor repairs out there over the last 12 months, um, but yes, we need some more permanent sort of solution, um, and this is the way forward for that. So those minor repairs will continue, um, just so we, we don't have uh, major water leaks um, leaking through into the ceiling or into some of our, our timber work out there, um, and we'll continue to do those minor works. And, until we find out that we're successful with this grant. Yeah, thank you. It's such an amazing facility and so important that we take care of our heritage. So thank you for um, your work on this and you're getting very, very good at re-roofing buildings, um, Manager Leanne, so thank you. Councillor Henshin. Thank you, Acting Mayor, through you. Just a comment more than anything, and thanks to Manager Peterson, we go out to Boondoom, the homestead quite regularly. I just want to say, uh, the Bunduma Homestead is looking vigorously for caretaker managers out there. Um, so this chamber needs to be aware that uh, for that place to uh, progress and, and um, go further down the track, there's a wonderful asset in our region. We need caretakers out in that facility. So next council be well aware of that. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. 
So we, uh, any more comments? We'll go to the uh, motion at hand, moved by Councillor Hanchin, second by Councillor Shoemaker, that the South Bennett Regional Council apply for a grant under the Round 8 Community Heritage of the Community Sustainability Action Grants Program, Capital Expenditure Project Category for Repairs to Bunduma Homestead Roof. We'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Unanimous. 15.2, application for funding under the Heart Foundation Act of Australia Inno Innovation Challenge and the officer's recommendation that the South Bennett Regional Council endorse an application for funding under the Heart Foundation Act of Australia Innovation Challenge. Do we have a mover? Councillor Potter, second uh, Councillor Shoemaker. Okay, here's your chance to ask any questions and have input into a grant application right here. <laughs> I thought this was a process we usually follow. So, look, I'm just... This actually is something when I saw it in Toowoomba on the... I saw one in Toowoomba on the weekend and every time I went past it, there was always somebody in it using it. And it's really good to see, and I think this is going to be fantastic. Um, and it's not just for the kids to use, it's going to be for... I expect to see us all down there having a go at some time. I will let you lead the way, Councillor Potter, and I will follow. OK, Councillor Schumacher. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to um, thank the team for putting it forward. I think the mouse house idea is amazing, and it will really complement the ninja park and the basketball court park four and ninja warrior course and that whole youth precincts that we're trying to create there for young people to have a safe place to um, hang out and be together which i know my son was traipsing around town yesterday afternoon you know 14 there are a few places that they can actually go like this so this is really exciting um i just wanted to ask if there were any updates in terms of when the work for the basketball court and those sorts of things are about to start, um, Manager Leanne. Um, thank you for the question through your acting mayor. Um, just an update on Memorial Park um, Youth Precinct. We, we are doing a lot of work in the um, design, the construction drawings, and that's going well. They're at the final stages. Those construction drawings will um, form part of new um, quotations and we're getting quotations currently from different suppliers. Um, what we have received feedback on is the time frame for supplying things like um, basketball hoops and Ninja Warrior courses. We used to work on a, approximately a 16 week lead in time. Um, some of those lead in times will now go over the 20 week period, um, which is making it very difficult for us to you know, deliver these projects. Um, so we're just working through that. And as I mentioned in the Capital Works discussion earlier, there are some major price increases that is occurring. So we will be bringing back a, a full detailed report in the third quarter review on what this expenditure is looking like for the youth precinct. Um, just um, to also note on this application, there is, there is, um, also, oh, with this application, there was a time frame of where the applications for this particular round closed on the Friday the 1st of March. Um, there will be a, an additional rounds for this funding program, so if Council agrees to this grant application, we would look at um, future rounds um, for this particular submission. But I think where we're at is, is bringing the report back. We're, we're really keen to get on board and get going. Um, it will be a June commencement for this project um, because what we have to do is you have to meet a lot of milestones with your design and your contracts have to be awarded before the department will sign off on your actual construction phase. Um, so it's a little bit different to some of our other grants where you can be doing some works um, and then while you're continuing design and quotation on other parts of the project. In this case, it all has to be fully designed, costed um, prior to the department giving us pr approval to progress. So we're just working through that. We have a deadline of May to meet um, for the department to demonstrate to uh, them that we have it fully designed, fully costed, all the permits and building approvals all in place for this project. Thank you for the update. Uh, I know you will get that May deadline uh, because we spoke to so many young people who just absolutely were backing and supporting this project. So I really do wish you well with that and thank you for the opportunity to work on it during this term of council. Um, I just want to make sure somebody knows or notes it down that Minister Hinchcliffe did 
promise a game of basketball when that court is finished and he is actually not rerunning in the next state government election. Um, him and his wife would love to come back and he would love to play a game of basketball with some of the youth there. So uh, I just want to make sure somebody knows. Uh, I was really looking forward to uh, dunking a couple of hoops with Minister Hinchcliffe. Um, and I know he was really passionate about the project here in our region. So thank you for your work on this. And uh, I really look forward to seeing it progress. Thank you, Councillor Ergens. Was that the same, the same visit where he pushed over Councillor Potter? <laughs> Councillor Duff. Uh, just a question um, similar to the previous question that Councillor Schumacher asked the last time. The 14,000 from its current capital budget, is, are we going to drop something to, to, do we have to, that's a, our current capital budget would have been all allocated or was it unallocated funds? Through you, um, Acting Mayor, um, the allocation is not there in this current budget. It would have to be considered as a future um, contribution in the next 2425 Capital Works program. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Other than that, we will go to the motion that's moved by Councillor Potter, second by Councillor Shoemaker, that the South Bennett Regional Council endorse an application for funding under the Heart Foundation Act of Australia Innovation Challenge. We go to the vote. Those in favour? Unanimous. <clears throat> 16, Portfolio Tourism and Visitor Information Centre, Sport and Recreation and Commercial Enterprises. We have nothing. 17, Portfolio Regional Development, Development Services, Community and Social Housing. 17.1, uh, we have reconfiguring a lot one, one lot into two lots at 2 Waterview Drive, Moffatdale, and described as lot one on SP 207409. An applicant is NC French, care of O'Reilly Nunn Surveyors. So the officer's recommendation is that the council approve the reconfiguring a lot development permit subdivision one lot into two lots at two Waterview Drive, Moffatdale, and described as lot one on SP 207409. Do we have a mover? Councillor Duff, seconded Councillor Henshin. Uh, comments, questions? Councillor Duff. I'm just interested to hear comments from um, the officer, Sam. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Sam. Yes, didn't see you there. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, OK, over to you. Uh, through you, Acting Mayor. To be honest, this was a, a straightforward application. Um, the reason why it ended up being an impact accessible application is because the property was below the minimum lot size in the rural zone. So that uh, pushed it up to be publicly notified. Um, we recognise that we did get a couple of submissions in relation to the application based on sort of the amenity and the disruption um, to the rural fabric. Uh, we acknowledge that and we've addressed that uh, quite thoroughly in the report. We understand though there's an importance of the rural residential land and community to Moffatdale. So it's on a corner allotment We've conditioned it quite easily. Um, there is ability to build another dwelling house on the property without compromising any of the covenants or access opportunities. So I don't really have anything more to add unless someone's got any further questions. No, excellent news. And uh, hopefully another ratepayer coming into the South Burner. That's what we're after. So we'll go to the uh, motion there, moved by Councillor Duff, second by Councillor Henshin that council approve the reconfiguring of a lot development permit subdivision one lot into two lots at two Waterview Drive, Moffatdale and described as lot one on SP 207409. We'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Unanimous. 17.2, we'll try and get this one through before we... Yeah, okay, we have two conflicts there. Uh, Councillor Shoemaker and CEO uh, Mark will leave the room. Don't eat all the food. <clears throat> okay, so this is a negotiated report for material change of use, residential care facility, general care units, NDIS units, palliative care units, and dementia care units, healthcare services, hospital plus 42 
times auxiliary short-term staff accommodation, cafe and florist, and childcare centre, 50 enrolments at 25 and 31 Markle Street and 7 Glendon Street. Kingaroy and described as lot one on RP42037, lot one on RP57027, lots two and three on RP7925, and lots four and five on SP146001. Applicant Ethos Healthcare Petrotry Limited and C59P Petrotry Limited, C Isaac Consulting Petrotry Limited. Now, Sam, I think I will come straight across to you for any information updates and anybody else that wants to comment before we uh, let the councillors loose on you. Thank you, uh, Acting Mayor. Again, this is a pretty straightforward application. Uh, the reason why we received a negotiated request was pretty much to update some of the ground floor plans that uh, SARA were involved in some of the changes to on-street and off-street car parking. So we wanted to make sure that we had a consistent set of plans. So um, the opportunity, because of the sort of tight timeline for the initial application to be decided, we didn't receive sort of the updated plans for the on-street um, and off-street car parking, which SARA had conditioned. So this is incorporating those plans. There's some minor changes to the landscaping plans um, through the stages, nothing that's um, untoward. It's, it's pretty much just making sure that they're updated to reflect the changes in the parking and the manoeuvring, so there's no conflict there. The noise report version was just the version um, of the report needed to be updated in the conditions. Uh, because we've already read that and understood the noise report, so it was just making sure that we had the most recent report included. The, uh, the next thing, I guess we've accepted everything that the applicant has presented to council. The only sticking point, which isn't uh, a loss either for the applicant or council, was to really clarify there was a condition relating to curb and channel. So that was on Glendon Street. And I think the applicant thought that the whole curve and channel had to be upgraded, but it was more of a clarification where there's the, now I'm going, I've got, I know I've got an engineer here eyeballing me, so I'm probably going to use the wrong terminology, but there's an on-grade transition between the set down area. So that's, we're not looking at having that upgraded. It's just the remaining curve and channel, because we understand that some of the curb and channel on Glendon Street is in poor condition. So it's just those sections of the curb and channel that could potentially be sort of broken or through, through stage one. So it's just those sections in stage one that will need to be sort of reinstated, but everything else in the set down area is completely separate. So this was conveyed to the applicant. There's a mutual understanding. So the condition remains as is and um, there was n nothing else to address. So pretty much we've agreed to all the changes, updating of the approved plan references, uh, the revision of the noise report version and um, sticking with the condition with Curb and Channel, understanding that there's that on-grade transition that is outside of what needs to be um, reinstated. That's pretty much it. Sam, can I just say that that was probably a uh, much easier understanding or understanding than what an engineer would have gave us. So well done. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, OK, look, the, this uh, medical centre down here is just going to be a game changer for the whole region. It's just going to be massive. And I, I honestly believe that the next council will have something really good to sell and the uh, investors will come because for this to be built in our region, it's certainly, I know it's giving investors heaps of confidence to come to the South Burnet, so it's it's massive. So congratulations to you and your staff. Councillor Duff? I just wanted to uh, you know, endorse what you're saying, Acting Mayor. Just um, pleased to see that there's no real complications apart from the little sticking point that you said, but they're happy with when you went back to them just to do that upgrade to the existing curb and channel. So yeah, just wonderful news that it's all going full steam ahead with very little complications, so that's great, so thank you. Any other comments, councillors? We haven't. Uh, we need someone to move this one. So uh, the officer's recommendation is 
that council approved the negotiated decision request for material change of use for a staged mixed use development residential care facility, health care services, hospital, child care centre and food and drink outlets shop on land at 25 and 31 Markle Street and 7 Glendon Street, Kingaroy, formerly described as Lot 1 on RP 42037, Lot 1 on RP 57027, Lots 2 and 3 on RP 7925 and Lots 4 and 5 on SP 146001. Applicant Ethos Healthcare Petrodia Limited and C59 Petrodia Limited. Care of Isaac Consulting Petrodia Limited subject to the following conditions and they're all listed below. Do I have a mover? Councillor Henshin, seconded Councillor Potter. Well, if I was able to declare a dead heat, I would declare a dead heat, but I looked over here, Councillor Hench and Councillor Potter. Okay, mover and seconder. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour, unanimous. Congratulations. That's a massive thing for the South Burnett. Bring the other two back in, please, Aaron. We might have, if we're quick, we might be able to slip these last two through and then do the, uh, then Sam can go. Oh yeah, Zach, how are you mate? Welcome to the fun. <laughs> okay, 17.3, reconfiguring a lot, subdivision, two lots into 15 lots, new road and drainage assessments at 189 and 193 Crompton Drive, Blackbutt North, and described as lots 109 and 110 on RP 174023. Applicant GLW Constructions, Petrochery Limited, Care of Land Partners, Petrochery Limited. Now, the officer's recommendation is that council approve the application for reconfiguring a lot, subdivision two lots into 15 lots, new road and drainage easement at 189 and 193 Crompton Drive, Blackbutt North, and described as lots 109 and 110 on RP 174023, subject to conditions and recommendations contained herein. Do I have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconded Councillor Erkins. Uh, we'll go to you, Sam. Anything there? It's another straightforward one, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Acting Mayor. Pretty much uh, this application came to us as impact accessible. There's a couple of allotments that were below the minimum road frontage, thus triggering a public notification application. It attracted a couple of public submissions, which we addressed in the report the uh let me just quickly go through it pretty much some of our concerns were based on the potential of flood inundation there's a overlay which has a map of inundation but not a necessarily known flood event so we've actually asked for further clarification through a flood assessment report our development engineer has assessed that as well and accepted the recommendations. There's also with the, there's a couple of submissions talking about the amenity, future subdivision of the allotment and concerns that it was sort of, there's a lot of infill development. Might point out that it is in the RR1 precinct, which is land that may be suitable for 4,000 square metre allotments. So they're all able to be uh, serviced with on-site waste disposal and rainwater tanks. There's recommendations in the bushfire report. So there are building envelopes, both for bushfire mitigation and also um, making sure that it's any of the houses are outside of flood, um, potential flood events. So the engineer has pretty much interrogated the uh, technical reports that have come through, conditioned it accordingly. So we don't have any objection to that. And pretty much it meets what the planning scheme criteria is for further infill rural residential development, which is um, appropriate for Blackbutt. And it's pretty much Crumpton Drive is virtually within a kilometre, kilometre and a half of the, the CBD, which, which meets the uh, rural res precinct. So that's it. Sam, just on that, um, that because it's one block, it, it's, an, it's able to be done because I've, I've had a lot of questions saying with your planning scheme and all that sort of stuff, this goes back and it's able to be done, obviously, and to say no to it when it meets all the 
all the recommendations and all that, hands are tied pretty much. Um, can you just explain? I, I, I take it on notice, but just for the people in, in the Blackbutt community in particular, uh, with the developer and all that sort of stuff, there's a bit of a history, but they wanted to know, okay, it's a one block, it's about 13 acres or something, if I remember correctly, or thereabouts, but it's down on Crompton Drive. It, it's an historical sort of a thing and it's, it's able to be done. Through your acting mayor, part of our planning scheme amendment was to identify uh, land that's suitable for future rural residential subdivision. This has to sort of meet a, a couple of criteria, either that have ability to be serviced. Some, some rural residential areas have, um, I'm gonna get this wrong with the engineers, it's like a low trickle feed. This is outside of anything like that in, in Blackbutt. Um, but because it's in close proximity to the CBD, it lends itself to be intensified. I can take further further information on notice and, and you know, do, a, uh, I guess, a formal response. But we've understood that instead of meeting the planning scheme's intention to not intrude to further rural zone land, we're going to support and facilitate further subdivision in these uh, rural residential precincts. Uh, so we, we're adhering to the state interests as well because the state have a firm footing in that we're not to uh, fragment good quality agricultural land. And this is a prime area. We understand that this is sort of a legacy thing from Nanango. So we're actually trying to retain it and make better use of that land for, for future residential opportunities. And we can achieve this through relevant conditionings and making sure that the people, places, things are, are safe from bushfire and flood risk as well. Thank you. Good explanation. Councillor Henshin. Through you, Acting Mayor. Manager Sam, just a question um, for clarification. On page 395 and 397, we have a map there of the flood hazard areas on the blocks. And on page 397, there's a paragraph there reads, all proposed lots are capable of accommodating a minimal rectangle of 25 metres by 40 metres outside areas of map flood hazard. Those lost six to nine frontage with less than 30 metres. So is that saying, and my, my question slash concern would be that in the event of a major weather event, those blocks only have an area of 25 by 40 metres. Page 397, second paragraph. Oh, sorry, here you go. So what, sorry, through Acting Mayor, what, what we're talking about here is when you're looking at subdivision, you have to have a particular area that's going to be outside of any map of known flooding inundation, which contains your house, your garages and items like that. Anything that's not, say, for residential occupation um, generally is outside of that en envelope. That, so my question is just, that, that in the event of flooding, there is an area 25 by 40 metres that's not prone to be flooding that you may be standing on with dry feet, so to speak. And that is a, is that a, obviously that's a standard and that's acceptable. So on a 4,000 metre block, that's roughly 1,000 metres. So that's acceptable in a, in a flood hazard or a flood prone area. I'm just saying that the council and the chambers and probably the public, like, you know, we hear it regularly, like, oh, why would they build on a floodplain or, or this, or it's been washed away, blah, blah, blah. So I just need, I guess, to confirm and, and put people's mind at ease that that's acceptable to have that area in a flood zone where it states there 25 by 40 metres on a 4,000 metre block. So that's acceptable. Uh, through your acting mayor, through the state interest where we have undertaken a review with state entities and say emergency services. This is a direction that we have, or a recommendation that they have given that council actually uses to ensure that when there is an event happening, 
you know, you have a, an area where you can safely be until you are forced to actually leave, leave the property. So this is the reason why when we put out information requests, we might get a subdivision application and we don't get that information necessarily. So we want to make sure that we can guarantee people's safety and belongings um, to be safe for a certain period of time because we know there are events that happen that you know aren't forecast so we have that technical data by um, RPQ the engineers that give us that that data to meet those actual requirements that's fine thanks yeah. Sam and I guess my point is just that that in the event of development down there purchases of that land are well aware that there's a 25 by 40 metre area there that they, they can um, get the high ground and not get washed away. Otherwise, in the event of floods, we know what'll happen. Uh, why'd they build there? So, thank you very much. Councillor Schumacher. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sam, for the comprehensive review. No, you're right. Um, thank you for the very comprehensive review and uh, have been over the conditions and can see you have definitely done the work in terms of maintaining the safety and making sure it's actual sustainable development. So well done. I um, Just looking at four, page 430 and only because, as Councillor Jones has said, there's been a lot of chat around Blackbutt in particular around this um, development. Uh, I've noted in your response to the... Um, feedback provided on the uh, application from the public and neighbours and objectors essentially, that um, the site's not mapped within Council's biodiversity areas overlay. And I just wanted to ask, how is that biodiversity areas overlay determined across the whole region? Uh, through Acting Mayor, so Council's biodiversity area is we've taken from the state government mapping because it's a very expensive exercise for Council to keep undertaking their own assessment and going out in the field and, and doing that. So we've taken the, the lead and, and pretty much adopted the state mapping. So anything that's of importance is always revised. So we actually refer back to the state overlays to make sure by getting the up-to-date reporting, whether there's mapped waterways, whether there's important flora or fauna, and whether or not we actually need further reporting on that information. But when we did the search of that biodiversity overlay, the lots that were actually proposed were uh, external to that overlay. Um, I must say, I didn't write the report, so I'm just sort of reading off, off the fly with this one. But- yeah, you're, you're right. Um, that it does answer my question. Um, and I just wondered uh, in terms of, there's been a lot of talk about council needing an environment officer or something to kind of assess um, vegetation in the area or uh, species in the area for all of our developments, not just this one. Um, it's probably a question for Manager Leanne. Like, I know our Department for Natural Resources over time, certainly in the time I've been in council, the funding that we used to get from state has not been there. Um, and we've really been restricted by the program. Certainly Councillor Henshin was right, you know, hungry after funding when we can for feral pig management, those sorts of things. But just in terms of council's capacity or what an environmental officer might look like, you know, it wasn't a question that was raised with um, me on numerous occasions, I'm sure all mayoral candidates have probably received the same question. And I know, um, you know, I guess, a challenge from a budget perspective so just keen to hear your views being that other councils have adopted offices for specifically for development yeah um thank you through you acting mayor yes unfortunately we we don't have a natural resource or an environmental officer on staff what we have been doing over the past 12 months is actually finding external um, support in that in that case because what we are finding is that we do need specialised skills, um, whether it's biodiversity, whether it's fauna protection. Um, so what what we have been able to do over, yeah, is find external consultants to support us in that field. Um, but there's also limited people um, across 
across the region that has those expertise. Um, so it's not always that easy to actually employ those people in-house. Um, yeah, so it is a difficult situation, but at the moment, um, until we review our budgets and programs going forward, um, you know, council's looking at climate ad adaption strategies. You know, you are constantly looking in this environmental and sustainable agriculture area. There could be a role in the future, um, or it's something that we do in partnership with community organisations like Burnett Regional Group, um, and look like we are with the feral pig type of project where it's a, a joint partnership arrangement with funding bodies and other local governments just to get those expertise in, in and support our projects and programs into the future. So yes, something that we've identified that is important um, and it's probably moving in the right direction, but no promises at this stage for a, for a person in house to fulfill that role. Um, but yes, something that we need to keep looking for in the future. No, I really appreciate the positive response and from a former natural resources officer such as yourself, you know, we're very grateful for the skills you have and bring the knowledge you bring to the table, so thank you. Um, Councillor Jones, I will support this recommendation, noting that we have a real scarcity for rural residential land across our region and that with the southeast corner push and the more and more that people from the um, coast and Brisbane are coming out here and buying property and choosing to live in the south of the net, well that's great. They are actually putting considerable pressure on the competitiveness of the market and Councillor Erkins would know that ourselves. You know, I've heard stories of local families actually just simply being outpriced and having to look at moving away because they cannot find affordable land to either build or live on. Um, and so I think we have to find a balance here and we have to find a way that we can make residential development um, and that infill development using those parcels of land that have been designated for that so that we're not fracturing rural land um, and sticking by the state planning policy. I also note a big part of the reason why I've decided to support this, noting the feedback from Blackbutt, is um, that you have addressed in the assessment of the application that um, you know the clearance of any state regulated ve vegetation on lots um, can only be undertaken in some circumstances as exempt clearing work and advice is given in the conditions for the developer and future lot owners to seek legislative compliance for on-site vegetation clearance and it's understood that the main nesting area for the black cockatoo to the rear of the site within the vicinity of the waterway vegetation in this area will not be cleared as it is within the overland flow path and also forms part of the assessment protection zone for proposed lot seven to nine so i really do appreciate that um, our planning team has taken that feedback from the community and done what we can to try to find a balance between all desired outcomes so thank you for your efforts and i am supportive of the uh, of the application Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, comments? Okay, we'll go to the motion that it was moved by Councillor Potter, second by Councillor Erkins, that Council approve the application for reconfiguring a lot, subdivision two lots into 15 lots, new road and drainage easement at 189 and 193 Crompton Drive, Blackbutt North, and described as lots 109 and 110 on RP 174023, subject to conditions and recommendations contained herein and they're listed all below we go to the vote all those in favor unanimous the people aren't there yet mate while oh, they're here um we slipped through this one we've got um people outside waiting for cere uh, citizenship ceremonies so we're not going to be able to complete it we've got questions on notice it's going to to be a brief okay so okay we'll adjourn and we'll uh, I move that we adjourn second by Councillor Henshin um, all those in favour unanimous we'll do this citizenship ceremony we'll come back and be done thank you
Now that we go uh, back into our general meeting, we have a second to Councillor Hanson. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. We now go to 17.4 on the agenda, Selective Inspection Program, Building and Plumbing Works in the Hydesville Township. And the officer's recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council approve a selective inspection program for properties within the Hydesville Township of the South Burnett Regional Council's jurisdiction in accordance with Section 134 of the Local Government Act 2009 to monitor compliance with the requirements of the Planning Act 2016, Building Act 1975 and the Plumbing and Drainage Act 2018, more specifically unauthorised and unsafe building works and plumbing works. The selective inspection program will be conducted between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday to Friday, commencing on the 3rd of June 2024 and concluding on the 30th of August 2024. Do I have a mover? Sorry, yep, I'm, Councillor I'm, Duff. I'm not going to move this. I'm actually going to speak against it and ask that it be lay on the table because I think it should be a decision of the new council. This is a major um, to, to go out there and send it letters out to the whole of Highsville and talk about non-compliance when there's non-compliant buildings right across the region, we're facing a housing crisis and there's people living in buses. I'm just absolutely opposed to this. So sorry, so I'm just going to move that it's a procedural motion. Um, uh, on advice, if it's a procedural motion, we can't debate okay, it. So I, I move that this lay on the table. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Potter. Just go straight to the vote. So, um, so the procedural motion that we have is to leave it lay on the table until the new council is elected after the uh, 16th of March. Uh, so straight to the vote. All those in favour? Okay, we have Councillor uh, Duff and Councillor Potter in favour, against. Councillor Shoemaker, Councillor Erkins, Councillor Henshin and Councillor Jones. Uh, the procedural motion is defeated, four votes to two. We now go back to the initial um, officer's recommendation. And uh, Council Councillor Henshin, well, who had their light on first? I didn't see. Councillor Henshin. Thank you, Opening Mayor. Just a, I guess a comment and totally appreciate Councillor Duff, but that's the council and future councils have got to take this on board across our entire region. Can I just make a suggestion, whether it's just taken on board or in a comment, that if council's going to do this, I would suggest that paramount in this would be the safety of our staff. Um, and I would suggest and I would like to think that they go with uh, someone in support and as well, if need be, perhaps, and I don't believe that in our organisation we have a body camera. Now, clear the yes, issue all their officers with body cameras today. You're dealing with here, which will be, of course, a contentious issue, but uh, this has probably come across because of, you know, concerns within communities, not just Oswald, not picking on Oswald at all. But I would suggest that this council and the next council, who they may be, certainly consider that support for our staff, be it security cameras on them, body cameras on them, and certainly go out there with uh, support. How that is, I guess, for the management to decide, but I think paramount in this is the safety of our staff. Thank you. Can I just go to the CEO to give us an update simply on why this has come and where we've... Um how we've got to this and I understand what Councillor Duff has said and what she was trying to achieve but I I voted against it, your, your procedural motion simply to have a conversation now where we land and how we end up with this is completely open but we do need to have a discussion and Mr CEO please explain. Okay, thanks, Acting Mayor, and, and um, thanks for the commentary, and certainly appreciate Councillor Duff and Councillor Henshin's uh, initial feedback. This has come about over a very long period of time, and now we have multi-agencies involved, uh, and I'll go to why Hydesville first. Hydesville, is a, there's a body of complaint uh, that has been in existence for a period of time. Uh, we've uh, gone ad hoc, we've looked at different ways. 
And if I can be just probably, I'm looking for the right word, but pretty much we've been ignored as far as the compliance. There are safe, uh, there are unsafe dwellings out there as there are elsewhere. We don't have the capacity to do the whole, the whole region at once. We've looked for external parties to come in to assist us. That's held us up. We're dealing with uh, departments such as Department of Health, the Ombudsman's Office, and a whole range of different other agencies. Whether it's now or within the new council, and it, it, this matter will have to be addressed. It, it is. The intention is not about removing, um, and I, we've had the discussion before about homeless people from buses or things like that. It is particularly, and in the report, it talks about the three month amnesty. What we'd like to do is work with people in an efficient and effective manner to actually get their buildings compliant and made safe. And that's the first port of call. Um, the, there is issues with, um, with sewerage works and, and on property sewerage out there. There's, we have a raft of issues. To continue, we can continue to do it ad hoc. Uh, we do need some um, uh, ability to uh, enter sites. This assists us with the ability to enter sites. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's been in conversation with other agencies. We've got extra staff on and building and plumbing, um, which has given us capacity, the body camera issue is um, is certainly being discussed and um, with compliance officers if there's a property that won't allow access or won't uh, doesn't want to work with us okay that'll go through there are some really easy ones out there that can be made legal uh, and also get them get them in the system the ability to pay we can invoice and talk to people about their financial hardship and their their process to pay now, it's up to council. Uh, we can continue to do it, and, it, and I, I do use the word, in an inefficient manner, uh, ad hoc. Um, this would, and why, one of my first questions, why 3 June? Uh, the start, because we, get, uh, we can get all the desktop studies in place so that we know, uh, with the, the ones that we know, have, uh, have contacted us in the past. The, um, we've got, a, as I said, a, a large body of complaint from out there. Um, there will be other areas that, that would follow, not quickly, but there will be other areas in the region that have similar issues. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, to give the compliance staff the support they need to actually do a coordinated program to go in. And the primary is to clean up uh, any of the, um, the issues to deal with sewerage and to make sure that buildings are safe. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillor Schumacher. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jones. There's a couple of things that I'd like to ask the CEO about potentially adding to this motion before we move it, if that's OK. Yeah. Um, the first thing I would like to ask you about is, could we add, what are your thoughts on adding that council, if you want to just pop it in teeth so that we can talk about it, that council investigate a pickup or rubbish service for you know, um, a rubbish collection service uh, for residents in Highsville. And what I mean by that, uh, Mr. CEO, is Councillor Erkins brought it up. Um, I'm sure I was talking to you about this the other day. Or I was talking to somebody. I was, I was actually out at Highsville recently. And they said a lot of the challenges is residents who are struggling they don't have the trailers, they don't have the utes, they don't have the facilities. And so you just end up with this just mountain of, of, of um, you know, televisions and fridges and all the things that rodents and things are living in. And I'm wondering if, as, a, as an immediate way that council could actually help clean up some of this issue, if it be costed or come back in the third quarter of you or you do some sort of investigation, as to what it might look like for us to send, you know, a truck and a couple of our people out to help remove some of this waste from the high school community. Yeah, if, uh, uh, curbs, 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 yeah, I was going to, uh, same thought. Yeah, so, yeah, up, uh, Councillor Shoemaker, if we could do that one, so, so we'll just do them, that one as a separate, yeah, we can certainly do that, do it as a separate one, because yes. part, of, part of the intent of running the program is we do have unsightly allotments collection, so if we're going to do uh, part of the amnesty, we could include, and if we just add it in as part of as part of an amnesty, yes. council investigate. 
that would be fantastic. Yeah. So, and again, uh, and I'm reiterating the uh, curbside collection. Yep. The other thing, uh, Councillor Jones, if I might. Yep. Um, the other thing that I'd like to um, add to it is there are so many overgrown allotments out there, and there is so much stuff in amongst the overgrown allotments. I actually saw two little kids trying to sort of mow their yard and picking things up, and um, I found it actually quite upsetting because I think the task would be just beyond their capability. I'm wondering if as part of the amnesty or the program that we do, could, could we do um, some sort of assessment of the overgrown allotments out there and how we may be able to work with the, the tenants, whether they pay council or, you know, over a period of time to help clean up these lots? Yeah. Um it, it, that one will be more, a little bit more problematic and a bit I neglect in the past is part of the, re, as we're starting that process of the review of the local laws, where we've hit and we have had, um, where we've had compliance notices issued for, uh, with um, some just maintaining the privacy of the, of the person, so I'm thinking how to say this, they've challenged the overgrown allotment. Uh, the rural area versus, and yes, it's own village in the planning scheme, but the local law doesn't align. Mm -hmm. Taking action on local overgrown allotments is much more problematic, would you believe? Um, when particularly when you challenge through a process, not not to say you don't want it, but hence one of the reasons why the drawback. So there's always the five whys. Why is why is it so? Uh, where we have, uh, and again, yeah, where we have, it has been challenged and. Uh, at least was was one one notice was knocked out on, on uh, the result of that challenge for an overgrown allotment. It is still an issue of complaint, but the action is limited. So, if we um, an assessment of certainly the assessment of overgrown allotments to and maybe use the term and audit. Yes. And yeah. Or, yes. Yeah. 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 That's and then, exactly what I mean. Yeah. And then we can have a look and we can we can. See what what action we can, because if we take further action on it, uh, it's 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 fruitless because it actually sets us back. And I'm not saying this is what you're saying, but this is the internal conversation. It becomes fruitless on an overgrown allotment if you get knocked back, uh, and then it becomes a precedent, and then you can't go to the neighbour because old mates told him that. Uh, if, yeah. I guess I'm thinking similar to here in Kingaroy where I know I've had a number of overgrown allotments in residential areas and council has actually slashed that allotment and then sent the landowner the bill. I think that's got to be a very similar outcome, I imagine, if we're a township here in Kingaroy and that's happening. Well, I find it hard to believe if we can enforce the law for election signage, but overgrown allotments is it such a challenge? Yeah, it's two totally different topics and you're in a, in a semi-rural area and it's village zone. So there is, there are, yeah. there are nuances and it's, and it is, and dogs, we, we're, we're now going down the dogs. There are issues with dogs and, and you get challenged in QCAT unless you get your eyes dotted and T's yeah. crossed and they get knocked out. So the audit is probably a very good start as part of this. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think there needs to be an audit of overgrown allotments and, um, the other thing I think council needs to consider is the reduction in application fees um, to actually ap apply for some of these uh, landholders to actually apply to council to have um, their approvals put in place. I think um, some sort of reduction or hardship arrangement needs to be considered. And I guess there are some of the things on a recent uh, day that I spent in Hinesville and I did actually drive around. Oh, and the other thing is um, an assessment of the roads and analysis of the roads and footpath. A lot of those roads in Hinesville are, they've got cracks in them and the grass is growing up through the cracks so much so that the road is barely even notice, noticeable as a road. Like they, they need, obviously need resealing um, there's some obvious work that needs to be done there, even just clearing up the roadsides in some of that village area. And I think if we could just add some sort of assessment of the roads and footpath, so if a report's brought back to council, and that can be considered for future capital works because, you know, I would love to see the Hivesville community 
become a community that um, you know people pride and people take care of, and I think we're all on the same path. And some of these issues have been let go so long that they've almost become so big, it's almost so hard to address them. So we have to start somewhere, and I think these are some of the things that would make a real difference in that high school village. So I'm happy to move that as a secondary motion to after this discussion, if that's what you would like, see your mark. I think we'll have a conversation because there's plenty more to add here and I'm just on those, like, you talk about setting a priest and I, I, I just put mine. Like, I've always said be fair and consistent, so I, I, Mark as CEO has highlighted why we've gone to Highsville first, but there is, right across this region, there is areas and if we start cleaning it all up, what guarantee do we have that the people are going to continue doing that? How much is it going to cost? Like, there's a lot of implications here and I... I, yeah, I, we, this is, and we, we've spoken about this for a long time. I'll, I'll leave it at that and I'll just go around everybody else and we'll have it. This will take a little bit because it is a very, very serious issue. Councillor Erkins. Okay. Firstly, I'm very um, disappointed that, it's, that this has risen at this stage. You know, we're, this is a homeless, a homeless problem across Australia very bad here. Some of, some of the things that I read in this, giving them a three-month amnesty, these people have, and a reduction in fees, these people have no money. What, do, what are we going to give them a reduction to be able to do? You know, I just can't see them doing that. There is nowhere that, for them to go. If we put them out because their places are unsuitable, where are they going to go? Are they going to go and set their... their come and camp in their car in our park across the road. That's what we had a lady doing there for quite some time. Go to the free camps across our region. There are people now living in tents. We talked here not that long ago about what arrangements had we made for people who lived in unair conditioned houses and they could go to the library because that was a thing we should make arrangements that they could go and cool off. Well, if you're living in a tent at two o'clock in the morning and it's stinking hot, there's no libraries open and there's lots of people now living in tents at our park or at their blocks of land. And it's not just Highsville, as you said, Councillor Jones, it's on blocks of land everywhere. I just, I just don't see, if that is such an um, issue out there, maybe Council should look at working with some of the service organisations who are very keen to do stuff for the homeless and we don't have the money to do it. We know that. We know that there's no... Even if we had the money, you can't come in and do it in a hurry. Maybe we should look at putting in some showers and some toilets in that area for public use. Just the, the demountable ones that you bring in to make life a little easier. I mean, I'm just, just on clarification, Councillor Erkins, sorry to interrupt, but keep in mind what uh, CEO said. This has come about because of a, a number of complaints. Okay. There okay. is raw sewerage, real okay. serious so health my, issues. So, my so I'm not saying that it's limited to Hydesville, OK, no. but understand understand why it was here and why... And this I is what we need to do. We need to have this discussion. I understand Carry on. that, but maybe we can work with some of the service organisations to put in some, some transportable showers and toilets for these people to, to use. I mean, if we keep having all these meetings about homelessness and how we're going to solve homelessness by us going into, as I said, not just Highsville, because once we start at Highsville, then we're going to go to Proston and then we're going to go to, um, where your area, Benarkin, like that. People are everywhere and people, that people are in, parks in Brisbane City, you know, so it's not, it's not um, something that's, that's easy to do. I've got three ladies ringing my office all the time. They're living in their car with children and domestic violence. You know, I mean, if they've got a block of land, I would think maybe one of the things we could do is work with that community. Maybe we can have a public meeting in Hivesville and get everyone in and let's just see what we can do with council, with some of these service organisations and with that community. But as I said, for, for us to look at, I mean, the three months, giving them a three months amnesty, like that is just, 
you know, I don't think we're going to be any further advanced and then what are we going to do at the end of three months? If they've got nowhere to go, they've got nowhere to go. So I, you know, I would really like to look at working with the community, with council, with some of the service groups, and let's see whether we can do something to, to clean, clean it up. But I don't think you're going to clean it up and have those people making their places council approved because they, they've got no resources really to be able to do it. And I just think, you know, one of the things that I think that I've always pushed, if we can't look after the most vulnerable in our community, you know, what are we doing here? And I believe that all my fellow councillors are here for the same reason. They want to help their community. And I just, I just find this, as I said, I, it's really, really upsetting because it starts here. And once you start, you can't say, OK, we're going to get onto this because right in the, our public eye and someone's complaining because then you've got to go right through the whole lot. And we're going to, you think we have a homeless problem now? I'll tell you, you won't even be, won't even count how many are homeless. Thank you. Stealing my thunder, Councillor Erkins, but all good. So while you're sitting there calming down, just think of an option to put forward on this particular motion because, again, this needed to be discussed because our CEO and staff need a direction and this has been discussed in this term of council considerably and we need to give something. Councillor Henshin, then we'll come back to Councillor Duff. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, look, this, this came across this chamber four years ago, Councillor Erkins, and it was discussed vigorously then, but one thing we have to be very, very cautious of here that it's not just council. You then start to delve into uh, what becomes police issues, what becomes welfare issues, what becomes major health issues, as the CEO has alluded to with sewage. Um, and as council, we just can't, and I'm sure our staff would be very jumpy at the fact that just going in there, hence is why I suggested before about support for our staff if they were to go in there take into consideration as well, uh, there is a transfer station 500 metres up the road. Councillor Schumacher, can I just ask and some clarity? You said um, part of an embassy council investigator curbside pick up a rubbish service for the residents in Highville. Is that a one-off to get all that rubbish or are you suggesting that that become a weekly service? No, I'm suggesting that's a one-off curbside okay. Perhaps collection. Perhaps we need to clarify that in that. It's a one-off to simply help those people who are struggling to actually try to clean yeah. up their properties. Yeah, and, and that's fine. I, I think you know that would be a, a good starting point to perhaps try and eradicate some of the um, rubbish that's there. And I'm, I'm sure and I hope the residents of Paisal would be appreciative if that was to happen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah. Councillor Duff. So, so um, and thank you. So, so, so I, I raised, I have raised this issue over the last probably 16 years, and all I wanted was whenever someone had a complaint that it was, if it was based on safety or health, that we would follow up with it and, and try and get those buildings to be at least safe, or, or um, not like if there was sewage running, that kind of stuff. Just deal with them gently, individually. But this full-scale um, notification, like, I absolutely thank Councillor Oakes for her passion because that is absolutely, like, if we sent that out, it would be, like, such a, um, to me, a disgraceful thing for our council to do in the, on the back of the fact that everybody's struggling. And there's people out there that you talk about body cameras, there's, there's, I've been there to every one of those places. You don't need a body camera, you need some, 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 like the, well, there's, there's, there's a lady in a bus, she is just so, she can't even get down out of the bus to go to the toilet. And I'm trying to get some. Point of order, Mr. Acting Mayor, can I just bring to your attention, Councillor Duff, that, that every councillor in this room, some two years ago, had a major issue with a resident that threatened every council member in this chamber. That was not and in police that. were called. So I'll just bring that to your attention. That when you suggest about body cameras, I'm concerned about the safety of our staff. Now that was a classic example. You were involved in that yourself. That was a bad You know very well what I'm talking about. That's okay, okay. That's okay. Totally Settle. Right, Councillor Duff, continue on totally with your comment. Issue. So 
so so um, I have been working, and I'm absolutely 100% support Councillor Erkins in getting the service providers involved. But I've been working with a group, a building, a bloke from Brisbane has started a not-for-profit group, and he's actually started to work with the lady in the bus, and there's another woman in, in a, a bus with a couple of kids, to start to, uh, he's got a design, he's going to build them houses, and then they're going to pay them off over a period of time with it, with their rent. And so we're starting to work with a not-for-profit group. They're getting funding, they're, and they're from Brisbane, and they came up last Christmas and gave out all hampers to every house in Howesville. So I've actually got this group called Destiny, Incorporated, and they're a charity group that are starting to work with those the worst cases in Highsville. So, um, and I agree with Councillor because we need to get more of those people like the um, CTC, SV Care, different ones, Graham House involved. But 100% that is the line I want to take, but not this send out a notice that we're going to go in and do systematic inspections because these people are so vulnerable and they've got mental health issues. It would just, like at this point, it is just, to me, it is just absolutely off the table and cruel. And again, I'll, I'll just reiterate that this has come through, through a term of council where we've discussed it on a number of occasions. There's all sorts of different agencies and level of government now involved. And once it's got to that level, something has to be done, especially with the health. So. I don't disagree with anything you're saying. Everyone's got good input. We need to come to some sort of a resolution at the end of this conversation. Yeah, no, we'll, but just understand that it has been this conversation, the CEO has brought it to the table simply because, you know, you can shake your head, Councillor Duff, but the fact is that we have to address it. And that's why I voted against your procedural motion to have this conversation. Now, it may still end up laying on the table. But this is an opportunity for us to talk about it and get a resolution because I don't think it's fair to hand this over to the new council when we were the ones that have discussed it and created it. So, yeah, Councillor okay. Erkins? So, so when, when we're talking about um, hygiene with the toilets, I just want to remind councillors that it wasn't that long ago that we were discussing the fact that we needed to open one of, keep one of the toilets over there in um, Glendon Street car park open because we had a lady over there, a, a lady with a disability, living in her car and using the gardens over there for her toilet. So, I mean, it's not, in, in, you know, it's not like that's a once a one-of out there. People are doing that. But, you know, maybe, as I said, if we go back to looking at a community meeting out there with some options, because you can get, um, you know, portable toilets. You can set people up with that sort of thing to say that. but. If we had worked with that community on how to solve the problem, rather than setting in a, a, a set of rules and going and doing that, if we work with them through the agencies. Well, just on that, Councillor Erkins, the council have been very lenient, and that's understanding the situation of all the people right across. So, Councillor Potter. Yep, thank you. Um, Thank you, Acting Mayor. Look, there's a few reasons why I voted with Councillor Duff on this one, but I do believe it does need to lay on the table. But I do also believe that um, April is too soon to bring it to the new council because the new council needs to sit down and discuss the issues that, um, that in the past issues and the issues that they're going to have moving forward when this is um, brought back to them. I do believe that um, we may have the, as you're saying, the raw sewage issues out there, which I'm, now that you've mentioned that, I'm a little bit concerned that EPA might get involved. And once EPA get involved, I know there's fines, like big fines involved with that one. And if we haven't done anything in that field, does that mean we as council get the fine because we've actually not followed through with anything? But look, seriously, I would love to, I would prefer to leave this lay on the table, um, leave it for the new council, and until at least May, until they've had time to sit down, assess and go through every single thing that needs to be looked at for them. Yeah, and like I said, Councillor Potter, it may well end up on there, but we are open to conversation. We'll give it another five or 10 minutes for everyone to have their conversation and then I'll call it and we'll go to the vote or we'll have some sort of an alternative uh, motion put forward. Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, 
thank you. I just want to confirm, CEO Mark, a selective program, what would that actually entail? Can you just tell us exactly what that looks like, a selective inspection program? Yeah. Okay. So uh, a selective inspection program is um, the area's uh, desktop audit. Uh, so we identify the ones that we're aware of as well as the ones that we've got complaints about and, and go there. Um, similar to the pools, where the, we know there's a pool, you'll go and have a knock on the door, ask to come in, talk to the people about it, get the paperwork uh, done, and uh, we work through, we just literally work through street by street uh, with the areas that are known, known issues. Now, if, um, if they come across, let's say it was two containers high and it was an unknown structure that hadn't been there before, but then yes, I would investigate. That gives them the power to go and investigate the new structure. But with the with the complaints that we've had and the also known issues, a selective audit would be to pick off uh, those ones first. So I said there's several that that would be um, easily identified. If council is of its mind not to do the audit, we really do need um, something about an amnesty, because whilst uh, and I very much appreciate and understand the councillor's passion, if we deal with this individually, it will be to the full force of the law. And this is what we're trying not to do, to do because if we go out and hit someone up for a sewage leak or illegal plumbing, um, I just where there is serious risk attached to this, which I, I don't propose to go into now. But um, if there's individual cases where we have to take either show cause or an enforcement action, that's what we don't want to do. So even if we don't do the systematic um, inspection at least in the short term, an amnesty, so anyone who wants to come to us can, and then we will help them get through get through legalisation of, of any structures on site. There will be some structures out there that is, um, at cursory view, may not be able to be made legal or safe. Now, they would have to be dealt with in their own cause, but if yeah, it's, it's put up, um, and for me to be quiet, but the, what's happened in the past can't continue to happen. Yeah, thank you, CEO Mark, for clarifying that. Um, my view on it, and we have talked around in circles about this for the last couple of years, and some of the biggest challenges have been that our building certifiers have been so tied up with our building applications that compliance has not been a key priority. And we have been somewhat compassionate because of the housing crisis. And I feel that we all know there are people living there in absolute squalor. And unless we do something today to try to help them, they will continue to live there in absolute squalor. I spoke to the publican. I spoke to the publican. I know the publican's changed a few times in this term of council. And I know every publican has had to lock their bathrooms because people were taking sewage from where they're living and they were clogging up the publican's toilet system at the Hivesville pub. That's a true story. And you're all very aware of that. So I would like to see us. We're not talking about going in there, you know, with a big stick and smacking everybody. We're talking yeah. about going in there and helping, doing what we can to help. And I get, I get that it is not going to change. I had a number of people at the Highsville Hotel bring this up with me. They said, we feel like we live in Hobblesville. We feel like nobody cares about us out here. We feel like there's nothing we can do to help the problem, change the problem here in Highsville. And you know what? I left. I drove every street of Highsville and I was absolutely beside myself. I thought, my gosh, we cannot continue to allow this to happen. Somehow we do need to bring community service providers to the table. Somehow we do need to help people find better housing outcomes. Somehow we do need to lift the profile of that town because you walk through the street, it's pretty evident it was a pretty humming little town once upon a time. There are some amazing buildings there that have just been sort of falling down. I'd love to see us go out on a working bee and paint the main street because I think it would make an enormous difference to the way Highsville looks and feels. And in this term of council, I know we have spent very little money, if any, in Hydesville. You go to their sports facility, it's falling down. 
There's a bathroom there. It's miles away. Everybody can't walk from the village that they're living in to the bathroom where the sports facility is. It's beautiful, by the way, but it's in the wrong place. We also have um, a tennis court. The fence is falling over. There's grass growing everywhere. There's nowhere for the kids to be. There's nowhere safe for families to be. I want to see that change for Hivesville. And unless this council gets brave, and unless it starts to actually work with others, we could keep hiding from this, which is what we've done for the last decade or so, because that's the view of the people who live in Hivesville, and that's the view of the people who are doing the right thing, who have got their building applications, who have built beautiful little homes. They're, they're trying so hard to lift the profile of their streets. How can we go and say, well, you maintain your yard and look after it, but the next five, you know what, we're going to turn a blind eye and we won't care. How do you think that makes them feel? They can't sell their property. They've got no shot at moving. They're still there. They've still got to live with it. They've got to wake up every day, step out onto their back veranda and look at that. Imagine how that would make you feel. Are we looking at the, in the park? I don't want to make people homeless. That is not the intent of this, Councillor Erkins. It is not the intent. The intent of this is to help. And unless we start to help somewhere, this problem is just going to get worse and worse and worse. There are buses in grass this high. That's and there are buses one where minute, one bus one minute, has cancel. fallen apart. There's another one that's just been brought and moved on in. There's sewage running out into the, into the gullies. There's kids living here. For God's sake, I cannot turn a blind eye to that. No way. I have compassion. I grew up in a social housing house. I know what it's like, but I want to see us as a council try to do something about helping these people or else the problem is just going to get worse and worse. I don't care if it's a fundraiser. I'd actually like to see that done. I thought about it. How could we bring community partners together to raise some money to help these people? There is so much more that this council could be doing, but turning a blind eye is not something that we should ever do. And I believe it starts here in Hivesville. And yes, it moves across the region because we have such a high portion of people living socially disadvantaged and we can't just accept it and leave them that way when we could do something about it. I don't want to take a big stick. I want to work with them. I want to work with those service agencies that CEO Mark has said. And I want to make a difference in these communities or else it's just going to get worse. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor Duff. Um, We've got three minutes this time around. So um, this is taking a big stick. It's sending a notice out to say that people are non-compliant and then starting to work through the issues. That's all it's going to do, is, as Councillor Erkins has said, is just then we're going to t try and get them compliant. And in Council's eyes, buses and things like that are never going to get compliant and they haven't got the money to do it. So all we're doing is just a big stick. Council's reputation is just going to be like, oh my God, fancy doing that to these people. When we could do, like Councillor Erkins has suggested, and I've been trying to, to do, for, and um, as Acting Mayor Jones said, that we, it's up to us to make a decision. I've been asking for us to make a decision for the last four years, and now we're asking this last council meeting to make a decision without, like it's just wrong because it's, because we've, I've, had, I've been working for four years to try and get us to have a policy on it, and we've done nothing, and now suddenly we're going to put a big stick out. So I want to move a motion that we work with the service providers. No, I'm moving a motion, like whatever you call it. We haven't moved the other one. We work with the service providers to... and we, that we organise a meeting with the service providers to address specifically the Highsville, is it Highsville Village with, 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 a, with, a, with a view to addressing the, the areas of safety and health in the community. I'm happy to get some advice as to the wording, but just that we take that approach first before we go with the council compliance. Thank you. And just to um, 
<clears throat> help you out there, Council, enough on your comment about me saying that we need to make a decision. This is exactly the conversation that we need to have and we are going to come to some sort of an indication for the staff. I didn't want you to say yes or no, we're going to hit them with a big stick. All I'm asking is have a conversation, get to a solution that everybody's happy and we can work. Now, I've got written down here, the CEO indicates that we need to do something with the amnesty. I've just got notes here, six month amnesty, community meeting and give the community the heads up that this is what's coming down the track. We need to work with you. You need to be a part of this conversation and we go down there. So we're on the same wavelength and this conversation is going to be that decision that comes out that's going to be beneficial to everybody and that's how it should work. Councillor Potter, did I see you waving your hands? Or can... Yeah. Yeah, so Councillor Hanchin, Councillor Potter second. Yeah, and then we'll come across to this sort of table. Yeah, look, great conversation and we've been having it for a long time. I'm so glad there's some candidates in the room because now you know what you're in for. Because, um, honestly, um, this is all fine. So you're going to throw this in the laps of the new council uh, that have no, no previous, they're going to have to read perhaps through hundreds upon hundreds of previous uh, minutes or literature that's been brought up on it. Now, I don't think it's fair to throw a new council, which is going to be, I really don't think it's fair to throw a new council in with the motion that we move against leaving this lay on the table. And I know there's going to shudder when I say that, but that next new council needs to be given the time to be able to go through this themselves rather than walk in here in a month's time and see a motion we put forward. Uh, and, and they've got it all there. It's, it's saying, it's there, everyone is saying. Um, meeting with service providers and address specifically the Hyville Village with a view to in addressing the areas of safety and health in the community. That's throwing, a, that's throwing in the deep end. Um, so I don't think we should, we should be imposing that on a new council. If that's the case, the new council should be the ones that make that decision. But the conversations it's had in this chamber today, and it's been a good one, and see, I appreciate that, yes, there has to be something done in Hyville, but why would we throw uh, yeah, I can't say what I want to say. Just, yeah, just, just on that, Councillor Anton, I'll just give you my in response to that. With the six-month amnesty, that means that nothing happens to those people in that short time. That gives a new council coming in uh, from April on, and they're going to be the ones that are going to have to uh, implement and deal with it. And I think it'll give them a good opportunity to go out. And I, I, I totally get what you're saying, and I, I really do, but six months gives the opportunity for the new council to, uh, we can start organising meetings or having something set up and it, the uh, new council will have three or four months because we were going to start the, uh, the pr proposal in the 3rd of June. So we're not losing a great deal and it'll just get, I think it's, it gives the, the community and the members of the community at Highsville the heads up of what council's thinking and that they are prepared to help them and work with them, but they've got to be a part of the game too. They've got to come across and be prepared to work in. That's just my thought. I yeah, thought, I'm think, and I don't disagree with you, new council, but mate. Fully appreciative of that. Yeah, we get in with a new council. Supportive of six yeah. months. Can I ask a question for you, acting mayor, to our managers? That six months would give you time, because it says in here that finance and resource implications. Now we know staffing will be a major thing. If you're going to go out there uh, and do what you have to do previously mentioned in here for 12 weeks, major impact on staffing arrangements there, no doubt, to go to Idle and conduct that over 12 weeks. So the six month thing okay. would be a massive help, I would imagine, to our staff. Uh, Mr. Uh, point of order, I've moved a motion that is now has to call for a seconder, and we're debating if I've moved that, is it a procedural motion? No. Aren't we debating no. that it's, motion? It's, you need a seconder. Yes. Yeah, so... I thought we were still basically under the stuff. Well, we, Councillor Duff's moved that, so I'll second it. Or, yep. I'll, who, do we have a seconder? Yep. OK, Councillor Potter. Councillor... Continue on now, Councillor Lynch, sorry. Thank you, actually, Mayor. With that, Councillor Duff, uh, would you be prepared to put that six months as acting mayor suggested in that... In that mode. Yeah, um, yes, happy with that. Thank you. I'd be happy with that. Thank you, Acting Mayor. Yeah, so just to clarify, so that we get a six month amnesty, 
we organise a community meeting out there with all service. Yep. Well, I don't know how we go, whether we just go and address the community first and then involve the so, community services. So, so the one I, the, the, my, sorry, through you. Yep. Um, the, the, I'm asking that we meet together with the service providers first yes. to see what we can do before yep. we go to the community, because there's no point in going to the community if we don't know what the service providers are capable of helping us. Yep, no, that's fine. So six months amnesty, um, have you got that clearly addressed in there? So the council organised a meeting with the service providers to address specifically the Highsville village with a view to addressing the areas of safety and health in the community and a six month amnesty would be the second dot point. And um, yeah, uh, if there's any other, and we need to keep it simple, don't, don't over complicate it because we all know what we're trying to achieve here. So we don't need a, a list of 10. So just if there's anything to add, add it now and then we may i acting just, mayor just there's a couple of points um and it's a and it's a point of fact um council duff statement there just before about been asking about it for four years and nothing's been done we've extended extensive time and resources in this space trying to fulfill this problem councils will remember and it's this is not about the building containers so it's not the conflict of interest um, specifically, it's just about it was about a program and dealing with the issue. To actually state nothing's been done for four years, the files, the resources, the dealing with external agencies, the serving of notices and actions out there, there has been a massive amount of work done in this space uh, trying to resolve some sort of a problem. The second point, the six month amnesty is for building and plumbing works so that we, anyone who wants to come to us we don't want to prosecute, we don't want show causes, we would like to work with people. Those, and if there is people out there that can actually uh, want, to, want to or would like to um, get what they're doing, the six month amnesty, now if there's a, oh, I don't know if you waive a fee, but um, the six month amnesty, amnesty for building and plumbing works and then we can deal, um, we can deal with those issues. And that could be across the whole shire. If we're just doing the, the amnesty, we can certainly put out a program across the whole shire for a, for a building and plumbing works, illegal building and plumbing works. So Mr. CEO, is there some way that we can get that message out to the community? Um, media? Well, That's out, of, out of today is, is a, will be the program. So we needed some sort of a head of power as to what we were doing uh, and which way we're going to go. Um, the, the approved inspection program uh, would have been a, a very efficient and effective way to do it. But if we're doing something else, um, that's they just need, again, we need some sort of a direction as which way we're going to go. So if we do specifically the community meeting for Hydesville and the six month amnesty across the region for building plumbing works, that would be, that would be good. And just for me personally, Councillor Duff, would, I'd like to see in there number three that, um, I mentioned around meeting with the Highsville community uh, and as uh, as early as appropriate or achievable or something along those lines. Is happy, that to, happy to have that included, thank you. Yeah. As early as appropriate, something like that. Okay, anybody else that wants to talk, we'll keep it very, very minimal. We've had a really good discussion. I think we're getting close to a uh, thing. So let's go about a, a minute. If you can keep it to that, it'd be great, Councillor Erkins, because we're well overdue for our discussion. I'm still very, very unhappy with the whole, the whole point of it, especially um, when we talk about a six months amnesty, amnesty, amnesty across the region because I just know, you know, I don't know if anyone here knows how much it costs to put in a septic system. And then tell me how many of those people out there can afford to put in a septic system. You know? So what are you gonna do with them? When they can't put in a septic system, they can't come up to, to space, what are you gonna do with them? Because all you're gonna do, they, they can't go to any houses, because I'm telling you right now, there are no vacant houses for them to go to. So where are they going to go to? You know, that's the whole point. And when, when Councillor Duff said, uh, well, about going to what it's like, when I first came under council and we did that tour around, she's shown us Highsville and what it was like. And I appreciate that council have been working with Highsville for probably four years, but there's no solution come 
I believe that the way to try is that meeting with the Hivesville community, um, checking, checking in with the service providers to see how many of them we can get to come to a public meeting. But in Hivesville, I understand that there are people in Hivesville who have got nice houses and they don't like all that stuff down there. But I'm telling you, you shift them from down there and where are they going to go? Up to your park, close to the toilet, but there's no shower there. So, you know, they, people have got to go somewhere. It's a problem across everywhere. As I said, there are people living in the parks in Brisbane City. They're living in tents. So if we can just get it cleaned up down there and help them work with it, work with the community and try and get them to be part of the solution and not necessarily part of the problem. And those people that are living in these nice houses and don't want to look down at it, they have to understand there, but for the grace of God, could they be one of their kids be? So let's try and get them. When we talked about putting, having a, um, a pick up their rubbish, maybe as a community they can get into it. You know, it's all, it is a small little community. Let's try as, as leaders of our community to go down there and help them and try and get it done. But I just think, you know, the six, the, for us to look at the six month amnesty, that, that concerns me as to whether that's a six month amnesty and then we're gonna be going out to look at people and try and bring them up to spe specifications. There are people, what about all the people that I know in Nanango, who mum and dad live in the house, the kids can't find anywhere, they're living in the shed. What are we gonna do with them? So they shouldn't be living in a shed, that's against regulations. They're probably going up and using the shower and toilet. And I know that I sound like I'm, that I'm raving on about it, but trust me, I'm on the coal face and I see it. It is there. If you've got a nice house and you're living in a nice house and you don't see what's going on, it's, it's okay for you. But this is a real, real problem. People's kids got nowhere to go. You know, or parents, yeah. so people with, you know. Councillor Erkins, just okay. a couple of quick, no, you're right. So the amnesty on there, the next new council can change that. They can extend that or whatever they need to do. The other one is, what's your solution? You st you st okay. Do you do you agree with me that it's a state and federal problem that needs to be oh, addressed by that? De exactly. So is. do you agree, hang on a minute, do you agree that council has been very cooperative up until now with trying to work? Okay, you say that the council, where's the solutions? Yep. That's up to us. Yeah, that's right. That's, well, that's up to fair. us. That's right. What's and your solution? That's see. all I'm asking. What's your okay. solution? Well, I see that you can't... I mean, I don't, I don't think that many of those people can put, afford to put in a septic. But, you know, maybe they can be worked with to get... You can get chemical toilets, you know, you know they can work. Maybe with some of the service providers, we can look at something like that. But as I said, okay. meeting yep. with, with that yep. community with council yeah. and with I, I thought providers. it was pretty clear that the CEO said that the council wanted to work with yeah. the community people uh, to honestly, work out a solution. They're not going to go and whack them with a the stick. That's this new motion yeah. makes sure that's not going to happen. And, and, and the I, CEO I, has indicated, say, I'm sorry, but you've got 30 seconds. I, I don't want to take anything away from the work that council have been doing. I know that. I know it's not an easy solution. If it was easy, we wouldn't ha it wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't be happening in all these other towns all around the place. It's not easy. But I just, you know, sometimes I don't think that people do understand what it's like for some of those people living in that situation. And as Councillor um, Duff said, you know, they're mental problems. They've got a lot of issues. So we need to go a bit easy with it. Thank Councillor you. Erkins, I think that every single person sitting in this room and outside in this, in this organisation completely understands so, how tough it is out so, there and all the mental issues. So, Councillor so, Duff, so, I'll come back to yeah, you, just Councillor a, Schumacher. I just want a question, but just, I just want yep. to know, I don't, does the amnesty just mean that they, we're not going to touch anything for six months, or does that mean that they can get free building and plumbing for six months? I don't Generally, think. when we run an amnesty, it's the people that, well, if we find something, you would, you could put them in, the gun buyback. So no one would get prosecuted for anything like when they, if they had an illegal firearm, remember the day. It's probably a bad example, but so an amnesty, it's probably is a bad example. The amnesty is to anyone who wants to come to us and, and um, say, oh, look, I've done this, I've done that, and I would like to um, get it legalised. There's no prosecution, there's no penalty for them coming to us. The waiving of freeze, I mean, certainly would, would 
be very interested in the discussion of waiving a fees for it. But at the moment, as I said, if we go out now without some sort of coverage and we start, let's, let's use the plumbing work for the sewage, our options are, we, uh, our options are to issue a notice, show cause, fine, whatever process is. There's nothing that allows us to waive those penalty provisions. So the amnesty, the six months amnesty, voluntary, we could, you could put voluntary, uh, voluntary um, ones in there, but the six months amnesty will give us the ability to, and why I'm so keen to have it in there, anyone who comes forward can do so without fear of any penalty. That's that's the point. So, what about twelve months? No, well, six months fine. The new one, look, under, it, it's very ex self-explanatory there. If if we don't have that six month or twelve month amnesty in or whatever, if we have a complaint about raw sewage running down the drain, our staff have to go out and it will be a significant fine. This 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 covers it. This stops all that happening. Okay, so they do have a six months. And I think it's more than fair. And the new council can have another meeting when it's about to expire. And if they choose to, they can go another six. They can go six years. So that's the whole point of it. Councillor Schumacher. Um, thank you, Councillor Jones. I'm fully supportive of the motion and the solution that was come to. Um, I would, however, I really do want to see us do some work in understanding what the costs of one of those road or uh, curbside pickup rubbish services might be or how that may be able to work so that we could at least take that as an option to the Highsville community for that meeting um, or um, at least know in the lead up to the budget preparations because I do feel that would make in the first instance an enormous difference and I also think that audit of overgrown allotments I understand that we have to go carefully but I do think that is, it is a big challenge out there. It is a big problem. And I do think at least knowing what the size of that problem looks like at least helps prepare the council to try to address it. Um, yeah, I just think the we need to investigate a one-off curbside pickup of rubbish service for residents in Hinesville. And we should and include in that an order to vote for an allotment. And at least that information can come back to the next council and they can make a, a judgment on that. I also think the assessment of the roads and footpath, understand if we don't want it in, the, in this motion, but I do think that does have to happen in the lead up to the next capital works program because there's some significant work that needs to happen there in Pilesville. Councillor Duff, you happy with those two added? Councillor Potter? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. last crack. Um, thank you. Look. Um, can I just thank um, Councillor Duff for bringing this forward and changing the motion? Um, I'm very appreciative of her for that. This is a, for me, this is a really good motion. And, and I think um, having an audit of the overgrown allotments, even a curbside pickup um, price for when we go out to community so we can actually let them know that, you know, we're not doing this, you know, to get the money. We're actually going to spend the money on them to help them clean up their own area. Thanks, Councillor Potter, and I think every one of you need to be congratulated. The whole conversation, no one, no individual has solved the problem. It's been a very good, drawn out conversation for nearly an hour, and it's certainly well worth the effort because we have now got to a, a motion that everybody's comfortable with, and I think it's going to be a good outcome for the whole community, plus gives our staff an opportunity with a little bit of direction to uh, try and make a difference in the and understand that Highsville is written in there and we've spoken about Highsville, but this will govern pretty much the rest of the South Burnett right across, because we have a lot of issues right across South Burnett. Okay, so we now have the motion moved by Councillor Duff, second by uh, Councillor Potter, that one, council organise a meeting with the service providers to address specifically the Highsville village with a, new, a view to addressing the area of safety and health in the community. Two, six month amnesty across the region for building and plumbing works. Three, meet with the Hydesville community as early as appropriate. Four, council investigate a one off curbside pickup of rubbish service for residents in Hydesville. And five, an audit of overgrown allotments. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Well, that's one we'll remember. Well done. Okay, 18, we move on now to questions on notice, 
It's the Piggery Road upgrades. The question was, is there an update on when upgrades to Morgan's Road and Cratsman's Road will occur as the roads are commonly used for the Piggery? The response is there. That question was uh, posed by Councillor Duff. Councillor Duff, are you happy with that response? <laughs> um, yes, but I still think we need to put more pressure on, on the um, on the Piggery, the bloke who owns the Piggery, because it's just seems to be going around in circles, but happy with the answer. Thank okay, you. so do you want to move that that be received? Thank, Thank you. you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor um, Potter, go to the vote. All those in favour, unanimous. 18-2, question on notice. The question was, has there been any progress in arranging a meeting with Acting Director General of Department of Regional Development, Manufacturing and Water, Linda Dobe? Um, that was posed by Councillor Shoemaker, I would think. And uh, are you happy with the response, Council? Not that the, yeah, are you happy with that? I just probably wanted to clarify. It says there's been a final deputation completed and awaiting confirmation of the appointment. Is, yeah. That's your response to the answer to the question. Oh, well, um, between the difference, so there's two different sections working on it. So the draft has been completed and there's an invitation, a request for a meeting in with the Acting Director General and she hasn't confirmed what date the whole time. Fantastic. I suggest, <coughs> Councillor Jones, that we take a bottles of Kingaroy water to that meeting and pop it on the table and ask the, the Acting Nanango Director too. General if she'd like to take a sip. Nanango as well. Nanango too. Yeah, Nanango yeah let's, as well. let's do it. Um, that would be my request of the next council. Make sure you take some bottles of water along with you. Yep. So do you want to move that that be accepted, Councillor? Yes, happy to move that. Uh, seconder, Councillor um, Potter again. All those in favour, unanimous. Thank you. 18-3. Was that it? Oh, here we go. 18-3. Uh, would we look at putting the road where the road reserve is rather than selling blocks of land? And that's uh, obviously from Councillor Duff, I would imagine. The facilities and parks department received the below question. Councillor Duff, are you happy with that response? Uh, yes, happy. Move that that be accepted, yeah. Uh, seconded, yes. Councillor Erkins. All those in favour, unanimous. Um, that brings us to a close of the meeting. And before we close it, I will give everybody a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes to uh, say anything they wish because this is our last general meeting, official general meeting, and last time that you will be heard in public. So we'll start here. Councillor Shoemaker, if you'd like to lead the way. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jones. I was just actually reflecting and wrote a few notes. I certainly can't imagine how many hours we've all actually spent in here over the last four years. Um, we've had some really late nights and some early mornings and um, I really do appreciate while there's been a lot of reading and a lot of thinking and a lot of challenging and squeezing and often tears and laughter and all of the emotions. I think um, certainly I'm walking away knowing I've done the very best I could in the circumstances and I'm sure you all feel the same. Um, there are some things that I am really proud of to have been a part of during this term of council in working with all of you. Some of that is the major planning scheme amendment and while we couldn't adopt it this term, I think it's an, it's an amazing effort that we did actually undertake that. The 25-year economic roadmap, which has been nominated for sustainability awards and really does set a plan for how this future, how the future of our region could look post the closure of Tron Power Station near Andy Mine, if we could just add some water. Um, the advocacy we've undertaken to increase our Bandoomba Dam allocation for the West Baramba Weir, the Barlil Weir, the Blackbutt Irrigation Scheme, I've thoroughly enjoyed being part of those projects. The Development Incentive Scheme has triggered uh, reconfigurations of a lot. It has triggered the infill development and some of the outcomes we had liked to see. The Housing Action Plan, working with yourself, Councillor Potter, and this council to take some land that had not been used or lived on and know that there will now be eight social housing units built in Kingaroy. And while I know this is a small start, I think it is a giant step forward, being that there has been no investment in social housing in this region for quite some time. And so I take great 
I guess, pride in knowing that there will be at least eight people with a home. And, and if anything, we've proven to the state government that we can partner with local government, we can be part of the solution. And if they just wrote the checks a whole lot sooner, we probably could have built a whole lot more. Um, some of the things in my division, I'm really proud of the footpath up Tesman's Road. That's one. I know there's many more footpaths to be built. Um, I'm really proud of the focus on parks and gardens and really lifting the livability of our towns. The renewal of our towns, it's been wonderful being across the region in Blackbuck, Cumbia, Kingaroy and Wandai working with each of you. The Wandai swimming pool, the work we've done there, advocacy for regulatory requirements around renewable energy and really pushing the envelope with our fellow resource councils, trying really hard to inspire the government to make some change in that regard. Deep diving into the budget uh, and those committee meetings, which I know have been tough and we've had many, many of them, helping address the long standing <laughs> drainage issues in Division 4. I know in my first couple of months of council, I was just overrun with phone calls about stormwater drains, and I'm pleased to see that we did resolve some of that. They're just some of my highlights. Um, certainly, the youth precinct, I'm so excited that that's happening for Memorial Park and that um, we have tried really hard to get some of those projects in the top drawer scoped up and ready um, so that when funding is available, we can, we can go after it. Because that 50 year old swimming pool down the road that sees a thousand small kids every week learn to swim does need renewal and replacement. Um, it has been an absolute honor working with you all. It has challenged me be beyond belief and I have had many a sleepless night like many of you. I have learned an incredible lot of useless information. Thank you, Councillor Henshin. And um, will always, regardless of what happens, value my time here as a council for South Bennett Regional Council. It's been an honour despite all of the challenges we've faced. I'm very proud that uh, I can walk away with my health help head held high, knowing that I've done my best to leave it better than the way in which I found it. Certainly wish, wish the next council and all candidates the very best of luck and um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Councillor Erkins. Thank you. Um, I think everybody is aware that I came in where everyone, I tell the story often, how you all had to unblock me from your phones and your Facebook pages. But um, I, have, I have really enjoyed working with everyone. I thank you for your support and I think everybody here has been um, extremely supportive, the staff as well as my fellow councillors, because um, coming in mid-term, um, you know, I was pretty much at sea for those first um, 20 months, <laughs> um, 12 months at least, because it is very difficult to work out what funding comes from where, what you can do, what you can't do. Being someone who's always worked for themselves and been their own boss, I found it extremely frustrating at times to not be able to just go out and do something. And I thank the staff and especially CEO Mark for helping me keep me on the um, right track and not um, go too far off, um, off kilter. I, I think um, as a whole, the, the council have achieved a lot. I think I've got a couple of little wins for my community and I really thank my fellow councillors for their support um, in that. And I hope that the time that I've spent, if I'm not here next time and to the following council, I'm probably more difficult to deal with outside of council than I am inside of council. But regardless of the results, you can be sure that I'll still be working for my community. Thanks. Would you, would you like a second opinion on that, whether you... <laughs> no, nah, good job. Councillor Duff. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been... Um, I'm going to get emotional here, 20 years. Um, I might go to Councillor Potter so I could get my... Yeah. Councillor Potter. Thank you. Um, look, I just want to thank you all for making this term um, as memorable as it could be. 
Um, we've had our ups, we've had our downs, but in the end, we've still gone for that coffee together. And I think that's what it's all about. As long as we can go, or tea, okay, <laughs> or a hot chocolate, okay, <laughs> Councillor Duff. So I'm quite open to tea and hot chocolate as well. But you know, as long as we can go out, have that coffee together, after a council meeting, even if we don't agree, and let's face it, we haven't all agreed on everything, um, so, but we've, st we've still gone for that cuppa if possible. Look, it's not only, um, you know, it's not only us that need the congratulations. You know, we've worked with the staff, we've worked with, on many different things throughout this term. We've done, we've, you know, finished up the Mergen KTP, we've done the Mergen Parks, we've done, West started the Wondai um, KTP, we've done Cumbia, we've, um, you know, and the Kingaroy one, we've started and finished that one. We, we have done so much through our time in council in every single area with Blackbutt as well. So, you know, we've done something everywhere and it's just wonderful to be able to say, well, we did that as, that as a council, you know, we made that happen. And you should all be very, very proud of yourselves for being part of something that, that has done something so tremendous within your communities. I know we haven't fixed everything, um, there are still a lot of things that need to be fixed up and sorted out, you know, whether it be the, the, the water, water issue and everything like that. But um, we know that we've put our best foot forward in doing everything that needs to be done. Um, you know, it's really hard when you've got state and federal governments that you have to deal with that won't do for you what you know they should be doing and they just fob everything off onto you when it's really... Um, it's really something that they should actually step up to the plate with, but then, but we know they're not. So then it falls back to us and, and our ratepayers to, to fix up those issues. Um, we've, as I said, the, some of the things we've done, you know, you guys have helped me bring the Youth Council to fruition, which is wonderful. You've helped me with the Arts, Culture and Heritage Strategy and getting the Arts, Culture and Heritage Advisory Committee up and running. And, you know, without you, um, you know, supporting me in that, though these things wouldn't happen. We wouldn't have the youth having their say. We wouldn't have the community have their say on arts, culture and heritage within our communities. And, you know, these are really important things because, as we all know, if we, if we do things, if we improve things and if we build things with our community in mind, then we know the tourism will follow. So thank you very much. Um, to, to you guys and also thank you very much to um, the senior staff. Thank you. Councillor, well, well, hang on. Kent. Sorry, Kathy. Yeah, Councillor Engine. Yeah? No. Councillor Duff, we'll slip back to you. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So I wanted to, um, I've been 20 years as a councillor, four years and whatnot, and I've got I've been 16 as a Malcolm Council. I've ab absolutely loved the job. I want to thank the staff, my fellow councillors. It's been great working with you. I could still win, <laughs> so I can need to get. Um, so, uh, and maybe I could lead this council as the first female mayor and councillor shoemaker, perhaps, because um, I got a call from Laura Cox from Win News, and she said that the first female councillor was from Kingaroy, Dr. Ellen Kent Hughes, and it would be wonderful if a female councillor could. In a hundred, it would be 101 years later that perhaps we could lead, one of us could lead the, this council as the first female mayor of the South Burnett Regional Council. So that's um, something exciting that Councillor Shoemaker and I could look forward to if, if the outcome is one of us getting that job. But also like to thank um, Acting Mayor Jones. We've had a lot of tussles over quite some time. I think it's two terms. But we've always been able to get, like you said, have a cup of coffee around a table and get on with it. I'd also like to publicly thank Mayor Otto for his passion and commitment to our community prior to his health condition. He was passionate about our community as well and he has unfortunately not been able to finish his term. I'd like to thank all of the staff. It's been an amazing journey. And um, yeah, just thank you and God bless. Councillor Anton. Thank you. A little bit of useless information to start with. And Councillor Potter, you'd be happy in being in your portfolio that did you know that competitive art used to be an Olympic sport? Can you believe that? Maybe we can bring 
maybe we can bring art back to the Olympics in, in after the 2032, is it? Whatever. I've got some more. I've got some more. Don't worry about that. Yeah, Australia's wider than the moon too, just by the way. That was a great country. But thank you. Yeah, we have achieved a lot of good things, haven't we? Been, been challenging and certainly, Kathy, councillor, you know, we agree to disagree, but you also disagree to agree. So that's part of the job. Uh, just um, my useless information, sorry, but um, Venus is the only planet, planet that spins in the opposite direction. And you know that these little silly little idiosyncrasies sort of just break up the day a little bit, don't they? And they're just some fun facts. It might be irrelevant to council, but I'll tell you what, if you can't smile or laugh, it's a pretty tough world, isn't it? Thank you, Jane. Coming in uh, halfway through, challenging, but yeah, well done. To our star. Thank you. Look like you, Kathy. <laughs> I have seriously enjoyed this time. And thank you, CEO Mark. You are the rock of this place. Thank you. Yeah. Well, people, since um, Councillor Henshin has um, useless information, First mini municipality in Queensland was gazetted on the 25th of May uh, 1859. Why that's significant? It was gazetted by the New South Wales government. We weren't a state. We didn't become a state until June. Local government has existed before state of Queensland. And uh, in 20 years, Ipswich was next and then there was a series. Um, yeah, over 20 years, uh, municipalities covered this. So by 1879, local gov government covered the entire state and has since ever to this day. Those who, who choose to serve and serve their community, I've, I've had a, a very long and privileged uh, relationship with local government and I'm yet to meet a councillor that has come in for the wrong reason. And people think, oh, there's always chatter um, out there about why and how people do it. Everyone I've ever worked with um, has come in for the benefit of their community and they do it totally for the benefit of the community. Whatever happens over the next couple of weeks, the community is always the winner because they always get a group of people they elect around the table to serve them. It's been a, pl it's been a difficult term um, and to cast you, I won't go through all the different, I had a, number of little achievements as well, but they've been mostly mentioned. The only one I would think is just remember back four years ago when we came in with COVID, this council um, handled COVID just, uh, and it's not rose coloured glasses, we had no staff layoffs, we did nothing extraordinary that other councils and that were doing. We kept the money flowing, we kept the operations working, we kept, and it's that essence of local government which is central to the community. And through COVID, we managed through COVID very, very well. Um, thank you, councillors. To the senior staff and to the staff of the organisation, we can't do it, I can't do it without you. And um, just my hat off every day to the people that turn up and dig holes and make water run and just work, pay invoices, take receipts. Um, I would acknowledge every one of you and um, thank you all for the opportunity. And if I may, without embarrassing her, uh, councillors would not know this is Tiana's last meeting. So she's going off for her, she's only uh, advised us this week She's going off on a very next big adventure and we wish her every best uh, going forward with the next stage of her life. Yeah, thank you, Mark, and uh, thanks to all the whole lot of you. Um, this is eight years um, and I'll just, I'll just, Mark just touched on the staff. Uh, without the staff, there's no reason for us to be here. So can I just say to every single one, um, <laughs> digging holes, 
planting flowers, watering gardens, mowing grass, copping all the abuse out there that they don't deserve. Thank you all very much for what you've done. Um, my eight years has certainly been very, very pleasurable and it's been touched on just how much you learn about yourself and uh, it's given me an opportunity to give back to the community that's given me so much. Um, uh, yeah, we're in, we're in a, uh, a race for the mayoral candidates, candidate, candidate and I wish everyone all the very best. All the other um, people that are running for council positions also, um, whatever it will be, um, I will certainly uh, support if I'm not here in the next couple of months, I will certainly support whoever's in the chair. It's, uh, it's been a, uh, a difficult term, as Mr CEO has said, but the highlights have been enormous. Everything that we have achieved, everyone that's in this room should walk out today feeling very, very proud of your achievements and what you have done. And just keep in mind that not one individual can change the world, but a team can. And we, at times, yeah, we locked horns, we fell apart and all that sort of stuff, but we came back. And today was a good example on that Highsville issue. We spent an hour, we got an, a resolution that come that everybody worked, and that's the way it's been worked. Uh, Councillor Duff uh, mentioned um, Brett. Uh, I, I was put in this position in the last eight months. Can I just thank everybody? Sometimes you mightn't have been supporting me fully or whatever, that's your choice. But uh, look, thanks very much for uh, allowing me to fulfil the role and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you people in this room. So thank you all. And uh, it's been an absolute hoot. So I just can't, again, I just want to thank the community, the staff, the CEO, all the senior management, Wish T all the very best. It's been an absolute hoot and uh, let it be what it'll be in the next two weeks and uh, whoever gets the role, happy days, congratulations. And uh, that's me, It's that's a wrap. And uh, I'll declare this meeting closed at three minutes to one and I wish everybody the very best. And if we don't meet again, good luck and may God look after you. Thank you.